Welcome if you're new here. Hey, Reed, got a special treat for you. L eating a late breakfast here in Taiwan. Well, most of you, like Reed's a very famous guy. Uh, he works with Peter Bergosian, who's a, a very famous guy. They're in Taiwan right now. But that's my acquaintances don't stop. Uh, famous people don't stop with Reed and Peter. I actually know a very famous musician, and I talked to him uh, on Wednesday, and he agreed to have to play bumper music for me, and uh, for the intro and the outro, and didn't charge me a thing. He is a classical violinist, and he um, he said, "Yeah, I'll, I'll do it." He played a ditty for me. I recorded it, and. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it now and see what you guys think as my new bumper music. And if you like it, what I'm thinking is, like since he's a professional, what I'm thinking is if you donate, I don't know, $100 or more, uh, we will give you a signed copy that you can have as your own. So without further ado, here's, uh, here's the new music. Okay. All right, here we go. Wait for the chorus, it even gets better. Here it is. Sorry, we will edit that out. Isn't this beautiful? Fifty dollars or more, this can be yours. Wait for it, it's coming. Professional violinist. Whew. So what do you think? Should that be my new bumper music? Or should I play that over top of Theus when they come in and bloviate? Yeah, I think I'll do that instead. Okay, so the title of this, and this is be a call-in show. I'll put up the link shortly. But uh, how some Theus use philosophy as a club and as a distraction. I was in a live stream uh, about a week ago that almost nobody saw. But uh, I like the guy, it's from Apologia Center. And uh, a guy named Sean, who's an atheist, who has often called into the show, I was listening to him and, and these guys talk, and they started asking him questions like, uh, uh, what's your worldview on concepts? And I'm going, what in the world? I mean, most people, if you ask them what's their worldview or, or do they, how do they view concepts, that's a huge philosophical topic and there's uh, many ways to look at it. I mean, it's just, and some people, what are you talking about? And so um, I felt like I needed to step in and, uh, and save Sean. And yeah, JR, you were there. By the way, this video is no longer on his page, but I still have it. So, uh, uh, Arthur, what's going on? Why is, maybe I just didn't see it there. But um, And see if you agree with me. I think a lot of theists rather talk about philosophy than the real reasons they believe, like personal experience 
or the historical record. Now, hear me out. A lot of Christians love to talk about that. But um, it seems like the more intelligent, is that true? The more intelligent the Christian, the less likely they want to try to defend their personal experiences or uh, the Bible. Maybe that's not true. But anyhow, I'll give Christians an opportunity to call in and tell me what they think. That is. Hey, thanks for the donation, bro, Joe. Sounded like a bridge falling too soon. Yeah, too soon. Pine Creek is on the Discord. Can you hear me? Oh, there you are. Now we can hear you. Can you read yeah. what you just wrote in the comment section? I love the Jews, and that's not hate speech because it has the word love in it. Right? Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> I don't. I don't see. I don't see why anybody should be hating. You know what? I think I should go into radio. I, I like. I like myself better, audio only than than watching myself on the video. Um, yeah. News. Face for radio. I love the Christians too. Yeah, and the Christians and the Muslims. And I love the atheists. And I love the Mennonites. Let's hope so. <laughs> I love Satan. Uh, who is the person who asked the question about concepts? Is that Occam's beard? Yes. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. I kind of view concepts as a verb, not a noun, even though if you look it up in the dictionary, I think it's a noun, right? So yeah, concepts, is. yeah, concepts is like what, what brains do. So one can posit, one could actually make the claim that numbers don't exist external to the brain. Uh, correct. Uh, just so some folks know, uh, that's Bill Craig's position. Oh, really? Yeah. So, and it's and then some other Christian, I, yeah, I some Christian think. philosophers disagree with him. But it, so some people think yeah. that abstract objects do exist, and some Christians don't think they exist. I understand why I think Occam's. If I was trying to guess his motivation for asking the question. Uh -oh. Is to get to other ways of having an epistemology, other than the scientific method. Am I, am I correct? That's partly true, but uh, for sh I really wanted Sean to start looking into philosophical things since he said he doesn't know. Yeah, I, I, I've experienced this many times in my life uh, because Christians will admit, Muslims will admit <coughs> that you can't test God, you can't put God in a test tube. So when it comes to epistemology, how you know things, you can't use the scientific method. So we need to come up with other methods. Much philosophical things. So that yeah, was Sean, the, uh, Sean, Sean is a poor guy from, from the UK. Uh, I mean... Hey, why can't you say guy, Ireland? But... Hey, hang on. Why can't you say Ireland and you got to say the UK? Yeah, yeah I'm just a dirty why do you have to support Irish the British like... country. Why do you, why, why do you have to support the British... ...of the UK. That's, you're supporting the Brits oppressing the Irish. Like, I, I took uh, three credit, maybe six credit hours of philosophy in my undergraduate about 25 years ago, and I remember almost nothing. That, that's and why you're an atheist. So my question... <laughs> <laughs> well... Uh, I'm just playing. Maybe, I'm just, but... Uh, <laughs> but the, I, my question for Occam's razor, or Occam's beard is, sorry... Uh, why do you want Sean to know about philosophy? Well, you might deny it, but I think that philosophical education has altered the way you think. I mean, you think really clearly. That's something philosophers do. Okay. Um, I don't know how much logic Sean doesn't think, think clearly. Here. Do I think Sean doesn't think clearly? Yeah. I think I do. Uh, I, would, I would say he doesn't think as clear as he can think. Like, do you think Sean has trouble going grocery shopping? Because he doesn't know philosophy? No, I don't think it's going to help him with grocery shopping. What will it'll help, help him with? Yeah, what will it help him with? It'll help him refine his worldview and to know, to, to live the examined life. Why do you want him to refine his worldview? Well, if you agree with Socrates that the unexamined life is not worth living, then, I mean. Well, what if Sean says Socrates, life. what if Sean says, I don't care for Socrates and I don't care what he thinks? Well, give Sean a reason why he should follow philosophy. A practical reason. So that he can think clearly. Okay, but you're assuming he's not already thinking clearly. 
Right, but I can justify that. You can justify that Sean's not thinking clearly? Is Sean still here, by the way? Yes. Yeah, thanks for defending me, Pine. Well, I'm not, I, get him. I'm not offending. Oh, okay, my bad. <laughs> defending. Well, I, I really want to push this because um, your question assumes so much of Sean or your statements are assuming, like, I want Sean to think clearly. You didn't say more clearly. You said, I just want him to think clearly. But even if you were I mean, to say, I want him, even if you say that you want him to think more clearly, I, I have to ask, do you know Sean personally? Like, is he lacking something in his life that he needs to think more clearly? Yes, he is. Hey, what's he that? admitted in himself philosophy. Yeah, but you're, you're almost saying philosophy is a good in itself, but I'm asking you to defend that. That philosophy is good in and of itself? Yeah, I want you to defend that. Why? Because it allows one to examine his own life. And why is examining one's own life, own life better, and how do you know Sean's not already doing that? I know Sean's not doing that because he said so himself. Because he used the word, because he said, I'm not examining my own life. Did he say that? No, he said that he, that he doesn't know much about philosophy. Right. So you're equating philosophy with examining one's own life. And that's the only way to do it is through philosophy. With, with giving you tools to better examine your life. Okay. But those tools, do they have to be philosophy? Well, how are you using the word philosophy here? Um... I'm using it in like the esoteric sense, the, the um, academic sense. How are you using it? The William Lane Craig lower jaw projected sense. I mean, people who aren't academics are philosophizing basically almost on a daily basis. So when you say philosophy, you just mean in the layman's way? Sure. A Socratic, a Socratic uh, thinking. Um, asking questions more clearly, like Arthur said earlier, defining your terms or, or um, uh, not being ambiguous with the terms you use, thinking, thinking logically, uh, being able to spot logical contradictions and things other people say so that you can come to true beliefs. So you're assuming Sean's not thinking logically, defining his terms, not academically, but just layman wise. Well, I don't know a lot of the terms, you know, though. You guys are talking about Sean like he's not here, like he doesn't exist. By the way, Sean, if I remember correctly, is the climate change fanatic, and I, I just can't believe I'm defending him here. <laughs> no, it's true. I, I don't know a lot of the terms you use, like all that, but I kind of understand it if you were to explain to me more simpler, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I, the reason why I'm defending Sean here is because there's a lot of terms I don't know either of, about many different fields and subjects in life, and I could just... And someone says, well, Doug, you need to know uh, what a carburetor really is and, and define your terms about certain mechanics. And I, I just ask the question, why? Why do I need to know this? Well, I and, would agree. Uh, there's a lot of terms that I don't know about different topics. But uh, not, not too long ago in this country, philosoph philosophy was something that was taught in schools, that we don't have that anymore. And I think the culture has been... Um, it, is that true? That philosophy used to be taught in schools in the U.S.? It's detrimental to the culture. Like in K through 12? Sure. Okay, yeah. So you're talking about things like knowing what um, a fallacy is and how to set up a syllogism and that sort of thing, right? I mean, yeah, just, just being able to set up a syllogism can make you identify things oh. that are fallacious. Corey. Yeah. Is your last name Hart? No, sorry to disappoint. Oh, do you know who I'm re referring to? Oh, uh, something to do with Bret Hart, I guess. No, no, Corey Hart was a famous singer out of Canada. He's the guy who sang, okay. uh, I wear my sunglasses at night. I think that was him, right? Well, I am a fellow Canuck, so... No, I'm sorry. We can be representing... <laughs> yeah, I didn't get out, I didn't get into the land of the free and the... And the uh, milk and honey and all that. You sound so. a little sad. Are you from Saskatchewan? No. Okay. No. You don't have to tell so, me where, what province you're from. But what, do, uh, what did you want to talk about? Did you want to talk about philosophy and, and how it's used as a club and as a... As a well, 
I thought this was this Thursday, so I thought I'd call. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's Thursday, and uh, I love the theists, and so. Okay. Are you a theist? Well, 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 yeah, but you're you almost had me deconverted. I do. You, Kim, you almost did. You almost did. Oh, but and and who pu someone someone pulled you out of the pit of despair? Who was that person? Oh, it was Jesus Christ himself. I boasted online about being a musical genius, and uh, immediately conviction came upon me, and and then I just I was just in hell. Like I, I like I don't really consider religion as something that's enhanced my life. Like I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of in it for the well, carrots and sticks so far. But like I I um I I I mean. I'd like it to be more than that, but uh, so you're just scared of hell. But, yeah, pretty much. Okay. Well, then I guess you better be a Christian. However, <laughs> however, <laughs> have you considered the possibility that oh, Islam? I know what you're gonna say? What am I gonna say? Uh, there's the God, the God that the God that judges people for following. You know these tyrannical religions and whatnot. Well, I was going to get more specific. I thought, like, uh, I considered the possibility that you're going to hell because you worship Jesus and, and are a Christian. No, I haven't considered that possibility because I've had very specific Christian-related experiences, like my experience of deliverance. Like, I was just I was studying uh, the occult in. Like I wasn't doing, I wasn't beheading chickens and and making, you know, hexagrams and stuff like that. But uh, there's I, nothing uh, wrong with beheading chickens. I mean, that's what you have to do in order to make chicken wings. <laughs> All right, but I wasn't do, I wasn't really really into it. I was just listening to some uh, lectures by a, a guy named Manly P. Hall, and um, and then one day I just got this notion like. Uh, what what is the nature of a self justifying being? And I realized, wait, that, wait, that's not me. Okay, so I got this big black like, void in mind, and then I just try to lay down. I try to try to recover, and nothing nothing works. Do you do drugs, Corey? Jesus. No, I don't do drugs. Okay, but nothing works until I uh, think of Jesus, and then and then I break down in tears. It's like that's it. But then I'm trying to plug them into the syncretic. Wait, 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 wait! I want to try. To, I, I want to really understand what you just said. You, you, you have these uh, episodes where you you think of your existence as some dark, deep void. Oh no! Uh, well, I mean, that's a that's a whole other issue. But uh, no, I I I'm actually generally pleased with my life, and I'm more pleased when I'm not Christian. Because it's not like it brings me any, like it, it. It just it just makes makes everything a tumult for me. But uh, but you know I'm not going to deny the truth. And uh, if I, but 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 I didn't get to my final my final revelation was was uh, I just got this sense I had to go pray and then I try to pray and I and it feels like I'm being torn in two. It's like very painful. Uh, and I, and it, it's very. Okay, wait, hang on, too. hang on. It's like, uh, hang on. You you feel like you're being torn in two. What are the two things you think are tearing you? Like being a oh, Christian I or not? Was, yeah, no, it was it was demon possession. Oh, you think you were demon possessed, or might be? Yeah, yeah. And I was delivered, and I I got to look at myself in the mirror because I was like, I don't want to do this right now. I'll do it later. Uh, my, but but do you right believe you were? And, you you truly and, believe you and were? I saw, I saw myself in the mirror, and I looked like this hideous, doomed, pathetic demon creature. And then I got back down on my knees, and I threw up. And then this warm light came in and it enraptured me and and filled me. Well, hang on, and, hang on, hang on, uh, hang on. I got so many questions here. Were you alone at the time? Yes, I was alone. And you weren't on any drugs or alcohol. No, I don't. I don't do any of that stuff. Well, then, to me, it's obvious that you were demon possessed, and now you're saved from it. I mean, what other explanation could there be? Well, your explanation would be that it was, it was the same as my psychiatrist's explanation. I have schizophrenia, but uh, ah. I don't believe that. 
But I don't believe that because I didn't know what deliverance was until it happened. I had never heard of deliverance. Well, usually deliverance before. happens from a priest. So, but if you were alone, who delivered you? You think just Jesus did well, by himself? Yeah, just just Jesus by himself, sure. And 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 I would say it's more a minister than a priest. Like it doesn't have to be like uh, well, unless you want to consider all Christians priests, which the Bible attests to, but. Like I'm, I'm, I wasn't into Catholicism. I did start out in the Orthodox Church, and I thought that was good. And then, and then I got convicted about the icons and stuff. And then I went to a Calvinist church, and that was just okay. Corey, like, Corey, if if you're going to tell me your life story, you got to pay me the same rate you pay your therapist. Yeah, but, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Yeah, but that's that's my. <laughs> How testimony. much do you pay your therapist? That's my testimony. But I, what I wanted to say was, like, actually, I don't think there are good arguments to believe in God, I think you have to take the leap of faith, you know, the leap of faith. Oh, don't say that around Christians. They, they don't like that. <laughs> yeah, don't. well, I think uh, you're, you're, you're just as likely to find a good reason not to believe in God as you are to find a reason to believe in God. So ultimately, you have to take the leap of faith, which is what Soren Kieker okay. said. I haven't read his book or anything, but... Okay, I well, you know what? I, I, you, If you... You said when you first came on that I almost led you out of Christianity or something like that. Yeah, well, you and and, and Bart Ehrman and stuff like that, and and yeah, my, me and Bart, we're like we're tight, son. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but but just the interpolations and the inconsistencies in the Bible, and and it all started when I learned about Phineas Gage. You know, the guy who got the pipe blown up through his his head when he was working through the railroad. And, and, uh, yeah, uh, hey, Cor and, Corey, Corey, <clears throat> you got to slow down a little bit. I got a question for you. Okay. Do you. Do you feel much better now that you've been delivered and you're kind of like back on track with Christianity? Well, no, my, my story of deliverance goes all the way back to 2018. And various stuff happened in between there. and and But just every time I get away from Christianity, it's like my life is just normal. And I'm like, I'm, I'm enjoying it. And then I get into Christianity. And then, well, then what, what are you doing? Thoughts come into my head. What are you doing? Because I'm, I, it's called hormesis. It's delayed gratification. You know, I'm waiting for the, for the, the kingdom to come. That's what I'm waiting for. Okay. But, so <clears throat> let me sum up here. You feel better when you leave Christianity than when you're in it. Well, in in a quotidian sense, day to day sense, yeah. Quotidian? Yeah, that just means day to day. Well, I learned something here at the Pine Creek Channel. Myron, did you know? Oh, Myron, yeah. I, fi I fired Myron. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, so I don't know what to do with you because it seems like are you asking me to help you doubt Christianity? No, I'm just saying. I think I think ultimately you make a lot of good points about these arguments because I don't think these arguments are the greatest, and I still haven't had like my faith in biblical inerrancy return. But my I just kind of have some vague notion of a biblical Christ. Well, have you sought uh, out? Have you sought out help, to him and Corey? Have you sought out help from Christian <clears throat> apologists? They can help you with these things. Well, I've already listened to this stuff like 1,600 kinds on the boat, and then, you know, and then you get this, you know, this 40 new species every year. It's like, uh, you know, I got to at least go with a local flood view on that. That's that's hardly a big deal. If, uh, if do you want, do you want me to help but... you get back to Christianity so you enjoy it? it I can do that as well. No, 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 no. I'm not asking for you to help me get. But I'm just saying I approve of a lot of stuff you do. Okay. Like, uh, like I, I agree with it. Well, also, of course, the conservatism. I mean, I think like there, oh, there yeah. need to be more outspoken atheist conservatives so we can focus on like the politics of conservatism and not have this atheism plus nonsense where yeah. it's like, well, yeah. well. Well, it's it's all about making people feel good and but, denying science. But you got to understand that there's a reason why there's very few 
conservative atheists <clears throat> in the United States, and it's because it's harder to fill that void in in that open heart. If you and it's much easier to be on the left and 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 really be compassionate for people and a secular humanist and so and feel sorry for certain oppressed minorities and then that way you can yeah. bring hope meaning and purpose to your life right well um hope meaning and purpose you know like uh like as far as politics goes i don't think you can find hope meaning and purpose there but i think you can only find it in some sort of uh where do you find hope uh, meaning meta- and purpose meta- Metaphysical, well, obviously in Christ, in Christ. Okay. And and even when I even when I was backing off, I was kind of just going into a Neoplatonist thing where it's like, oh yes, we do believe in divine simplicity, but we don't have this, we don't have this book or anything like. But that. hang on, Corey, to... you said you could only find hope, meaning, and purpose in Christ. Yet, uh, was it ten minutes ago? You said the main reason why you're in Christianity is because of fear of hell. Fear of hell. But... Yeah. Is that well, hope? I wouldn't say it's the the main reason is fear of hell. I'd say the main reason is of like uh, heaven. Like you know, it's the hope, meaning, and purpose. You know, that's what what, what I look for. But it how does Jesus give you hope, meaning, and purpose? How does Jesus give you hope, meaning, and purpose right now? Uh, well, I mean, he's like uh, he's like the guy. You know, he's like I'm he, the guy. He, he lived, I, I, I can give like, you way, I Corey. Know. I can give you way more hope, meaning, and purpose than Jesus. You know why? Why? Because I'm alive. He's dead. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't believe he's <laughs> dead. I believe he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. So you do? You I believe mean, that? Yeah. It's, yes, I do believe that. Yeah. Okay. Really think about what you just said. You believe God, Jesus, is sitting at the right hand of the Father. <laughs> I, I want you to imagine when you say sitting, does he have butt cheeks that he's sitting on? I don't. I, that's that is like <laughs> such a childish question. Just at least ask me where. It's a deep philosophical or, question. Uh, it gets to the metaphysical the king, the reality. Wife. Yeah. Well, um, not really. I mean, he doesn't. It's 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 just a metaphor. It's just a lot of a lot of stuff is metaphorical, right? I mean, yeah. What, so you don't really believe that? Got, but hey, he's uh, got a pretty impressive pair of glutes on the fresco on top of the, uh, you know, uh, Michelangelo. Cor- Corey, uh, Corey, the Sistine Chapel. There's a very rude guy in my live stream chat right now who wants to ask you a question, and his question is, okay. what's up with all your grunting? Grunting? Oh, I don't know. Sometimes when I sit and like this, it compresses my diaphragm. So maybe I don't know. Maybe this is better. Are you I'm... sick? Like, did you just get over the flu or something? <laughs> no, this is just how I speak, unfortunately. But there's no woman in your room, right? No woman. Why would there be? Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> actually, actually, no. I, that's more the medication than my my. Uh... You're on medication right now? See, a lot of people are going to say, Doug, what are you doing talking this long to a schizophrenic on medication? Like, Well, why, why, would, why would that matter? I mean, it's like what yeah. Pontius Pilate said, what is truth, you know? What See, I don't truth? discriminate that's, against the mentally ill. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. My, uh, but there's yeah, probably a lot of but, people who do. They say, Doug, I shouldn't talk to you. Yeah, right. Because, well, why would that be? Because you'll encourage me to do something rash or... Well, because I'm not a licensed therapist. I'm wasting time because I'm not going to be like the cookie guy, you know? I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, I was making these cookies. You remember that guy. And nobody else could make the cookies like I can make the cookies. I I, I lost lost that that guy was... That guy was so bizarre, but that was, that was, that was a hilarious interview. But uh, So do you want um, – no. so uh, we need to end this somehow. Uh, um, do you want me to give you advice? You just came on to thank me for bringing up your good points once in a while. Well, um, Would you like to donate $50 want, and did, get a signed copy of, of the Titanic uh, well, song? I did want to ask you if you've ever like had an encounter with a fiddiest on, on your program. A what? A fidius? I'm a fid, fid, fidius. Oh yeah, I've had so lots. I believe, oh, okay. All yeah. Right. 
Yeah. There's not okay, much you can so say to them because they're never going to deny their personal experiences or or come up with different attribution. Oh, what are, are you doing? Push-ups on the floor now? No, I'm not doing push-ups on the floor. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what the problem is, but. Uh... Okay, Corey, I need to let you go. If you have a beer okay. in the fridge, go ahead and drink it. Other than that, okay. have a good evening. Okay, maybe sometime we could talk about antinatalism too. Oh. Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. Next time. See you, Corey. All right. All right. See you. God bless you. Science bless you richly. <laughs> okay. How do I get out of here? Count to three and then pray to Jesus. One. Okay. You're just going to knock me off. Okay. Three. Yeah. Jesus sends his prayer. <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I have. I think it's fine, right? It's fine. You might not be able to, to cite what exactly that fallacy is. Like, um, I don't know, name any the um, straw man fallacy or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but, but you'll know that it is a fallacy just by knowing the syllogism or how, how to structure a syllogism. Okay. Now, I agree that those things can be very useful in life, but we both know that the vast, vast majority of people. For those of you who just got here and came late, I'm defending this atheist against uh, two philosophers beating up on this um, this poor young boy. In this world, don't know how to do that. They, a, they can live great lives, great, fulfill, fulfilling lives, right? Absolutely. I didn't say so, they can't, though. Okay, so then what... Why are you asking, Sean, about this? Why? Yeah. Well, because I, in a in a friendly way, I love Sean, and I want him to be able to articulate his thoughts more clearly when he calls in, so that we can, you know, know what he believes instead of assuming what he believes based on uh, statements that he makes. So it's not because you want him to leave atheism. I mean, I would love for him to leave atheism. I would love for you to leave atheism and become a Christian too. Why? Oh, apology yeah, ascender. If he's going to remain an atheist. Oh, hey, no. apology ascender. I'm, <clears throat> did you see me smile when I said that? You got to get my sarcasm, right? I want you to have eternal life. And I think I played the part where you already said, uh, maybe it's coming up where you said, no, we're not beating up on him. Okay, so the, see... <laughs> Very quickly, we got to the root of this. No, no, we didn't. The you died it then. Hang on, I'm going to stop this. And uh, and Arthur, is it? I I wanted to play this, but I couldn't find it on your channel. Did you make it unlisted? If so, why? Because this was great. I thought. Um, uh, uh, I, we can go there if we want, but I think, but I think that's the. You can't ignore what I think Carl said because uh, Sean's called in before. He's not his first time calling on the show. And I know Carl yeah, personally. To too. Yeah, I know Carl personally. And um, wait, you I met think him? The idea is so Jerome asked the question of Sean, and his response was so. If let me put it this way: if you're going to engage in dialogues about the sort of stuff that we talk about, uh, which is which is fine, I think what Carl is saying: be prepared to have those dialogues. Yeah. It, it's like, <clears throat> this is, okay, this is my take. My take is Christians want non-Christians to become Christian. It's understandable. They also understand that telling them to read the Bible and praying doesn't sound too intellectual. And it seems like they can easily reject it. Well, I just don't trust the Bible. So where do you go from there? Philosophical worldviews. That's where you go, Right? Uh, let's see here. I've got another color. No, Heidi, you can't come in. Right, because well, did it, did Sean bring this up, or did uh, I? I was like, I just popped on. I don't know, maybe I know, twenty minutes okay. ago. But from no, my understanding, Jerome asked him a question about the best argument for. I mean, essentially, it was like, hey, what do you think the best argument is for God's uh, existence? Like to me, this is a bit, a little bit like a uh, Ray Comfort. Uh, well, uh, Arthur, since you're here, what's the best argument against God's existence? Um, where people just living their everyday lives, minding their own business, mm. and Ray Comfort starts asking questions. Have you ever told a lie? 
and you know that makes you a liar like it's like I, I, but we weren't, know, we weren't ganging do, up on Sean. Just, Here it is. I just, I want you to know that. Well, no, well, I understand um, that you weren't ganging up on him, but it's one of those things where I truly believe it's not like Sean doesn't. And Sean, you can speak for yourself, of course. But my guess is it's not like he hates philosophy or whatever. He just, like most people, they just don't care. And then the question arises: Well, why ought they care? And then you've answered that question because you can think more clearly and so forth. Um, but um, let me, let me ask you, let me ask you, do you, blessed be he, you can call in I, and ask your question and I'll answer for you. I think, hang on, the, yeah. before you go to the true motivation and that kind of an assumption, um, do you not think thinking clearly is a good in and of itself that will impact your life well? Yes, of course. Okay. I agree with that. Yeah. Cause you know, you, yeah. you get into arguments with your wife, you want to think clearly. But there's a big difference between encouraging someone to think clearly. Like I do that all the time as well. I mm -hmm. tell people to be more dead inside because uh, uh, I think that helps them think more clearly. It's one thing to say that. And it's another thing to say, uh, what's your worldview on concepts? I mean, this is a, in the academic ph philosophical world, this is a huge topic. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, but I don't think he was making a necessary kind of, he wanted an answer for that. I think what Carl was trying to do was find a correlation between um, not... Why ask a question if you don't want the answer? ...on physical things and whether you believe it, and then God is a non-physical thing and whether you've thought about that the same way. That was just like an example. Right. I'm quite sure he asked the question, but maybe I'm wrong. ...example he was using. Right, and that's why I brought up motivation, because where this is going is... How can you uh, justify believing in God? What's good evidence? For I can God? almost guarantee you like? Carl's motivation is that, um, Sean, it would be better off for all of us, not just Sean, for any one of us, to define our terms, think more clearly, be a bit more logical than we are. That's his motivation. Yeah. Well... We can, when I asked about the motivation just five minutes ago, yeah, it was about eternal life. No, no, you let you it. You did go. not ask about my motivation. You did ask kind of a leading question, correct? And then he just, like, yes, I, you know, like, uh, there's nothing wrong with leading questions. There isn't. I would say that the question about, con I would say the concept, the question about concepts was a leading question by Occam's Beard. Yeah. That's yeah, true. but you, you didn't ask what my motivations are. You you said, would you like Sean to become a Christian? And I said, of course, I would love both you and Sean to become a Christian. You you assumed that my motivation my my motivation was um, was that, but it wasn't. Okay, why did you ask the question about concepts? Why did I ask the question about concepts? Because I wanted him to start thinking that there's more ways besides uh, science. Listen to or this. The scientific method to. Uh, uh, with true conclusions. Okay, and why did you want him to think about other ways of coming to truth other than the scientific method? To pique his interest in philosophy so that he can think more clearly. I call BS on that. That's my opinion. Because I want him to think more clearly. That's partially true. That's a partially true answer, I'm sure. But I think the real majority reason why is because what I said earlier. You can't put God in a test tube. And so for anybody who loves science and um, empiricalism, empiricism, uh, <clears throat> they're stuck in, in becoming a theist um, because you can't put God in a test tube. So, which I actually disagree with, but anyhow. Um, so there's this reason to come up with other epistemologies, and that is to get people to think about other ways of knowing God is real. And I think if this Occam guy was here, he would admit, yeah, that's at least part of the reason I asked that. Not just so people think clearly. And why did you want to pique his interest in philosophy so he can think more clearly? Because both you and I agree that uh, thinking more clearly in and of itself is a worthy pursuit. Yeah, I, okay. If, if you're going to stop there and leave it at that, then that's fine. But a part of me 
forgive me for saying this, part of me doesn't believe you. That's fine. Can can someone it's, let me ask this question, uh, Doug? Can somebody have multiple motivations for doing what they do? Sure. Arthur, if you're still here, um that's a rhetorical question, right? Like, you know the answers to these questions. You're like me. You know the answers to the questions before you even ask it. At least a lot of the questions. Um, so if we're kind of like not playing around and we don't care about each other's feelings, you know I'm going to say yes to that. So then just skip it and go to the next one. But I realize you and I are a little different than a lot of people and you kind of have to do baby steps. Sure. Okay. But then admit that. Yeah, sure. But I, again, I, I if, if, like, I would want atheists who reject God uh, to think well about their atheism because I'm sick and tired of talking to dumb atheists. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly how you feel. <laughs> sick and tired of talking to dumb atheists. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of dumb atheists out there. There's a lot of dumb Christians out there. And you know what? There's more dumb Christians out there than dumb atheists because there's more Christians than atheists. Yeah. True. I think, that, I think that's but, a fair yeah, statement. We don't... I, I would say the same thing uh, if I were in your shoes, Doug. I want Christians to oh, think well... about their Christianity well enough yeah. because you get kind of sick of Welcome, talking Occam's. to dumb Christians. Well, but you're not calling Sean dumb, I hope. No, no, no. I'm no. just generally speaking. No, no, it's fine if you do. Like, yeah. I'm ignorant. No, no, no. I'm, I've had many conversations with Sean, and um, I've, uh, the, the moments in which I think he could have done a better job, I've told him you could have done a better job, and in moments where I could have been a help to him. I don't know. Maybe Sean is a little dumb. Him, I have been of help to him. Just keep and sometimes I've just said that conversation is, Sean here is too? just not even worth having. <laughs> I can't believe I'm defending a climate change fanatic. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I want to read this comment that uh, that was put in by uh, Narek. He said, "Oh, Carl, I understand why you would." Are you asking me? Uh, okay. So Sean you don't need to know about philosophy to criticize religion. Not really. Well, actually, Sean, know. the first thing you said I liked is you don't. Well, do you need philosophy to be a Christian? Oh. No, absolutely not. No. Or to come to Christ? Two different nope. questions. Right, and that's why I asked two different exactly. questions. Yeah. <laughs> so if you don't need philosophy to think clearly to become... To think clearly enough to become a Christian. A Christian, which is the most impor important part of life, at least for the Christian, uh, it seems like philosophy is like not needed. The most important thing oh, that's a that's a heavy conclusion to come to. Well, oh, really? If Christianity is the if becoming a Christian or not is one of the most important decisions one can make in life, and you don't need philosophy to get there. If 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 what you said is true, then my my intention, if I believe both of those things, if the answer to the first two questions you asked is no, then obviously my intention cannot be to bring Sean to Christ through. That, that wouldn't be my motivation. Okay, I but, think clearly but the, because I won't still, bring him to Christ. The point still stands, though, right? Like if. If you do say that you don't need philosophy to be a Christian or become a Christian, and if, if as a Christian you say Christianity is the most impart, important part of life and the most important worldview, then well, you can say philosophy is important, but it's not important to that. Checkmate. Uh, yeah. Um, Would I say philosophy now that, by the, Christianity? Let me jump in here. Um, so I, because Jerome started. Okay, so for all you theists, all you Christians out there who are planning to study philosophy, to be a, a Christian, <clears throat> a better Christian. Not needed. <clears throat> All you need to do is read your Bible every day, pray every day, trust the Lord, pick up your cross, follow Jesus, run the good race. You don't need no stinking philosophy. If you are a Christian listener right now and you're currently enrolled in a philosophy class in, um, in university, if it's not too late, drop it. Just drop it. See if you can get a refund, because you don't need it for that purpose. Okay? In fact, if you have a really good church, 
You don't need it. If you have a really good pastor, really good Bible studies, you don't need it. Can I get an amen from the Christians? Save money, drop philosophy. I'm going to put them on blast. Classes. I think I, it, Jerome said, I think you need to understand some philosophy in order to talk about religion. That's why I asked my question to you earlier about a good argument for God's existence. And added on top of that, he said, that conclusion that Doug just drew was what I call brave. And I would agree with him. I agree with Jerome on that. Oh, you agreed with um, Jerome, not me. But if, if you were to <laughs> ask me that question. What, let me, uh, Doug, let me ask you this. What do you think the most fundamental um, oh, I remember this. Discipline. Most, I said math, and he said logic, and then, yeah, we left it at that. Some philosophy type things more, mostly because he calls in a lot and like engages on these topics, and sort of seems kind of naive about a lot of it. Yeah, oh. that's, that's actually what I was trying to do. Uh, if, if... What I would say to you is, uh, you might say, well, the origin. Uh, Pine Creek, what is more useful, a philosophy degree or an English major? <clears throat> I'd say an English major. Because you can... Uh, when I hear the word useful, I, mean, I think practical. I think uh, becoming financially independent to support a family. If you want to be poor and miserable, uh, get a degree in philosophy. ...of the universe. Maybe that's what you meant. And that's fine. Like, oh, the, un the universe needs a beginning or something okay. like that. Yeah, that's and what that's they would say in a... Yeah, but I think that's generally what Carl was going after, is that, hey, um, as we're going to engage, I think Sabre Aldo would was in agreement with this. Yeah, I think I'll leave it, leave it there. Something just popped in my head. I, my own daughter... Um, On the drive home from her work, I had to pick her up, and she, we started talking about Jesus for some strange reason. I don't know how Jesus came up in the conversation. Oh, because she works with a lot of Christians, probably. And she didn't get that there's a difference between Jesus the man and Jesus the, the God. I think in her mind, it was an all or nothing either see, say that Jesus never existed and it's all just a bunch of garbage or that this Jesus does exist and was who he said he was. Now she doesn't believe, so she goes with the garbage. And I'm going, no, no, there's, those are not the only two options. There could have been a real guy named Jesus who walked and talked and had a following and, and preached and, and died on a cross, and yet he's still not Superman. He, he didn't walk on water, he didn't do all those, all those miracles, and he didn't rise from the dead. It's not this all or nothing. But then, and then I explained to her that the way she was thinking is the way some atheists think, and also a lot of Christians think. A lot of Christians think, well, how, how can you not believe this? I mean, it says right here that, that Jesus appeared to these people, and he rose from the dead. I mean... We're done. They're basically an all or nothing type thinking people as well. It's fascinating. And here's, I think, where Arthur and I would agree that people need to. I can save you so many, so much money and credit hours in philosophy just by doing one thing. Whenever you have a belief, Ask yourself, what is the counter to that belief? So I believe X. Imagine someone who believes not X. And then ask yourself, what are all the reasons they could say they don't believe X? Come up with them on your own. If you can do that as a human being, whether it's religion, politics, or whatever, that's all the philosophy you need to know. Is Arthur smiling? <laughs> <laughs> I believe Jesus walked on water. Okay, now come up with uh, three reasons or two reasons or at least one reason why some people don't believe Jesus walked on water.
when I was at that um, right wing conservative conference in Phoenix, I asked that question a lot. What would someone who disagrees with you, what would they say are good reasons to not agree with you? And it's amazing how many people were just like, what? I, how should I know? I'm not them. Imagine, think, put yourself out of your shoes and into someone else's. Oh yeah, later on in this video, um, I asked Arthur, do you think some people just are incapable of doing that type of philosophy? And I'm of the opinion, after a decade of doing this, yeah, there are some people who just, they are mentally incapable of doing it. And then you got the people who are just stubborn and refuse to do it. They could do it, but they're just so deep into it, sunk costs, whatever. They're stubborn. They refuse to do it. And then there's people who can do it easily. Pine Creek, not so. Philosophy pretty much opens the door to anything an English major can do. Okay, then we can agree to disagree. You asked my opinion, I gave it. I'm sure there's data on that, uh, how many people get jobs after they get a philosophy degree. Yes, uh, blessed be he. I just had a shower about two hours ago, so I'm very purified. See, Apology, uh, Apologia Sander gave one answer to my question. What's another? Uh, Jesus walked on water. What would someone who disagrees with that say? And he gave one answer. Supernatural doesn't exist. What are two other answers? <coughs> one could say the supernatural does exist, and Jesus still didn't walk on water, right? So what, why? Why would they say that even? Why would someone say, I believe the supernatural exists, and yet I don't believe Jesus walked on water? There's a lot of people who would say that. What, what do you think their reasoning is? If you were still a Christian, ask, I'm a Pentecostal. <laughs> uh, how would you be feeling about the world coming unhinged with all the evils exponentially rising in the world at the brink of war? Your thoughts? First of all, you don't have to be a Christian to be concerned about um, the affairs of the world. Um, and I don't think the world's coming unhinged. You got to... I'm a Pentecostal. Take yourself out of your shoes, your worries, your fears. Imagine how worried and fearful people were at the beginning of World War I, at the beginning of World War II, during the Civil War, during the American Revolution, during the Cold War. Do you think we're as worried and concerned as those people were? No. They just, people feel, might feel worried, but things are not as bad as back then. That's my opinion. Like we're not having millions and millions and millions of people slaughtered like in World War II right now. We're just having, you know, tens of thousands. Yeah, Arthur gave another one because it's historically inaccurate. And then another possible answer, it's uh, a type of mimesis. So it's not meant to be historical in the first place. Some people argue that. Oh, blessed be here. Now you're, now you're, I think you are trolling me. You're asking me um, what I deem as uh, silly questions. <laughs> but you made me laugh, so it was worth it. Anybody can call in. Arthur, if you want to call in, you can. If you call in, I'll promise to bring out my lower jaw and start talking like a philosopher.
The universe did not have a beginning. When I say universe, I say capital U. All reality had a beginning, but even that is in question with the Big Bang. And if it is in question, does that make Genesis false now? Who's to say? Maybe we just will reinterpret Genesis 1 to mean something else. In fact, if you actually read the original Hebrew, it doesn't say in the beginning. It says when God created the heavens and earth, not in the beginning. So it is all very esoteric. So whether there was a Big Bang or not, the Bible is always correct. <laughs> Neil! Neil, are you there? Yo, can you hear me? Yes! So I got something to add to this conversation. Sure. Are you a fan of Nietzsche? Uh, well, I don't read, so but I've been told by some Christians that I am just like him. You are, you are. I, that's why I thought you would be a fan of him because you kind of you have a very similar personality. You're very, a lot, yeah, you're a lot like him. That's that's very true. Yeah, there was one uh, Christian who I ended up blocking for some reason, but <laughs> one of the last things he said to me was, uh, "You're just like Nietzsche," or not? You're very similar to Nietzsche. So what what exactly am I? How am I like Nietzsche? Well, he just, he, he's very, the thing about Nietzsche is everybody is up for criticism. And he's, he just holds no punches, and so do you. So that's, that's pretty much where I'd say you, you two are a lot of Okay, life. speaking of holding no punches. He also, he's also very critical of the social justice, uh, take care of the weak type of mindset. Mm. That's kind of where you're. I don't know, but you could tell me if that's you or not. I don't know. I'm not well, I, I, no, I, I'm. I nobody cares for the poor like I do. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think um, that's the government's responsibility uh, or first go-to responsibility. But right. I, underst I understand reasonable people disagree, and that's fine. But what I wanted to ask you is, I got the impression you didn't like me. No, I didn't. I don't. When when did you think that? Because I'm a conservative atheist, and I think about... Uh, well, I disagree with a lot of you, but I never didn't like you. Okay. Because I get the impression that you're in the camp with Myth Vision and Dr. Bowen and all these people, and, and they kind of like don't want a other atheists to watch me. Is no. that true? No, not, no. I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I would probably consider myself a, a liberal and I'm more on the left. But I wouldn't, I don't, I don't, I'm very, I talk to all, all types of people. I, I get in trouble all the time for talking to people that are considered no good. Like the Robert Price thing, a lot of atheists left me like right away. Yeah. And I know you probably, well, I don't know. Do you, do you disagree with Robert no, Price? I, I used to get in trouble for talking to Robert Price. I used to get in yeah. trouble for talking to people like Giorgiani and for talking to Christians like, uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Andrew, whatever his name is. Oh, the, from the Crucible? Yeah. People Andrew always, Wilson? Why are you talking to them? You're platforming bigots. I just want to talk to everybody, you know? Okay, so you're, you're a little bit like me then. So why, except liberal, and I'm a conservative, um, but do you find that people are giving you grief? Like to the point where they leave your channel? I've, yeah, I've seen... I've seen comments like that where people will say, like, I can't believe you're platforming this person, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, there they definitely are. Not not a lot, but I've seen it. Definitely seen it. Maybe um, maybe you're 51% conservative. <laughs> I don't know about all that. I'll, maybe I have a little bit of me. I'm trying to under, I try to understand people. That's all. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, I'm yeah, I'm glad you called in because... I, that misinformation uh, in my head that you didn't like me, I, I just, I don't know why exactly I had that in my head, but now you cleared that up for me, so now we're no, some I always, I, I, I was probably because I, I always miss when you're live. I always watch, like, the clips that you put out and stuff, so. No, that wasn't it. I think it was from years ago with the Robert Price thing, and I think I, I seem to oh, remember. Oh, it just popped in my head. I know what you're talking about. You were in my, you we were talking about Robert Price, and you said something in the chat, and then I said something back to you, and then that's what it was. Yeah, I, you remember? You know what I'm talking about, right? 
No, I don't. But I remember, I, I don't remember the details of the video, but I remember making a video about you that wasn't flattering. I don't even, I don't even know. I didn't know you did that. I have to yeah. go watch that now. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea you've ever made a video about me. <clears throat> this is the first time I'm hearing that. Yeah. Um, let's see if I can find it. Let's see if we can break a relationship right here live. Um, all right, all right. Pine Creek uh, Gnostic inform, Informant, right? No one ever told me. Usually people will tell me, hey, this person made a video about you, but no one ever told me you made a video about me. Uh, I'm not seeing it. I think it, ha it was a video about, was it about Robert Price? Yeah, that sounds right because I, we I remember I now I remember at some point this was probably maybe even two years ago or a year and a half ago or something where I was talking about Robert Price and you were in the chat and you said something to me and I it was something no I remember what it was you said you, well what I about found it. bothering Christians and you're like you're like what isn't that the same as bothering people who are trans and I was like and I said something like dude you're talking about people who believe in a religion that has been around for thousands of years that has power and dominance and control and wealth and wealth versus people who are just trying to be who they are. And I, that was my disagreement with you. I found it. I found it. And, right. and you, you said to me on a video, your analogy sucks, bro. All right, let's watch it. Well, you won't be able to hear it. So um, go back to YouTube. All right. Mute yourself here. All right. And then you can hear it. I'll wait a few seconds. All right, yeah, one second. I'll tell you when I got it. I'm going to pull on my phone. Okay. This will be fun. It might go from a nice conversation to... No, no I got pretty sick. I don't care. I got yeah, so mute, you got to mute yourself here. All right. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to play it. This was uh, one year ago. Dr. Bob was on a podcast with uh, Doug from Pine Creek and... Some things were said, and some a lot of people were hurt by some of the things that you said, Dr. Bob. With trans people, would you, if they wanted to be uh, referred to as a certain pronoun, would you do it? No, I'm afraid I, I will not let people tell me what to say. Uh, okay. But uh, but if they now if if they have uh, made the transition and now say the, uh, the a man who does this like Bruce Jenner uh, and becomes. Uh, a woman, uh, I'd say, yeah, I, I'd say she in that case. But all of this stuff with uh, where they they start parsing it to the point where we supposedly have 150 genders and, and you have to use the right uh, pronoun or you'll be fired or something, that is lunacy. But I respect people's uh, identity choices and I, I see them as individuals. I saw Doug make a comment about yeah. Uh, should we should we be afraid for Christians' uh, feelings? This we're talking about ideas and people. Look, if somebody people if somebody trying that... to just be treated as a normal individual versus an entire ideology that gave us the dark ages, like this is totally yeah. the, complete. The analogy sucks, bro. Like because if people could understand where God brought me from, where He brought you from, where He brought him from, where He brought, we are nothing. Nothing without him. It's all about Jesus Christ. I was on my way to hell and I should be in hell. So I'm playing this for those of you who are from South Dakota, not too bright. I'm playing this to show that the identity in Christ is similar to the identity that a trans person might, might say. And it's very important to them. So by me, you know, figure it out. But by the grace of God, I am here today and I'm standing and I'm breathing. I should be dead, but I'm not. So true or false, Bob, Abraham existed. False. Moses existed. No, false. Uh, the 12 disciples existed. Unlikely, probably false. Jesus existed. True or false? Uh, false. I, I don't know that, but I think not. Yeah. Okay. We are nothing, nothing without him. So to hear Robert Price say, Jesus probably didn't exist. Not even his d disciples probably existed. Um, all, to, to say that, and to then hear a guy like this 
saying we're nothing without Christ, is similar to a trans person saying, if you don't affirm my identity, you're, you're saying, you're questioning my, my own existence. This is the same as a Christian. If you're saying Jesus didn't exist, if you're saying all this is just, I'm nothing without Christ, and now you're questioning what Christ's existence. This is the parallel I'm making. Yeah, I see what you mean. I mean, I don't think you have to personally affirm who they are. Like, it's about just being polite, right? Yeah, but you can be polite and still say, like, for example, I, um, I've told, I, I was talking to people yesterday about this issue about pronouns. And um, I asked this trans activist type person, if I was to say, okay, I will use the pronoun you asked me to, but I want you to know that when I'm saying she, I'm thinking he in my head. So if you had, um, even if I didn't say that, and you had like a, if the trans person could read my mind, do you think they would be content with me just using the pronoun? Or do, yeah. they, or, or do they really want you to share in the identity that they espouse? Well, you can't, they can't force you to, to change what you feel. Like. Okay, but, but then what's the purpose of, for, for, like if I tell a trans person, I'm going to say she, but I'm thinking he. Okay. Um, that, do you think that makes it all better? I yeah. mean, just to use the word she? Yes. Because I'm, I'm letting them know that internally i'm kind of there's cognitive dissonance in that you look like a he you talk like a he to me you're a he but i'm saying she in in a way it's a type of insincerity well it does it doesn't matter because it's not about you it's not just about you and that person it's about the you know the situation you're in let's say it's a classroom everyone in the classrooms around they're all listening and it just makes things smoother that everybody's on the same page and you treat people you know, with respect. It's, it's really that simple, I think. Yeah. But the thing is, where would you draw the line with that? Like if someone said, I'm a tree. I well, want then, you... Yeah, I, I, I agree. We're talking about, we're, we're, let's keep it with people. It's not, it's not, let's not change into trees and animals. Okay. I, I, I'm black. I want you to refer to me as um, the N-word. <laughs> well, th th is anyone doing that? I don't think so. Actually, there, there was a woman that did that. that right. Oh, yeah. Her. There's actually been more than one. There's yeah. been a, quite a few who have claimed to be black and not black. Yeah, I think gender is, is, is not the same as race. So they've got to keep those two things separate, you know? What, what's different between gender and race? They're both social constructs, right? Sure. So what's the difference? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. But anyhow, this is what popped in my head why you th I thought you might not like me because I made this video. No, I, I forgot all about that until you, brought, until you brought it up. Yeah. Okay. But um, do, before I go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what I called for to, to, about the Nietzsche thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, continue with the Nietzsche thing. So he's got, it's his first book he ever wrote. It's called Philosophy in the Age of the Greeks. It's a really good book. And right it's like in the first or second chapter it's pretty early on he compares the empiricist thinker you know the scientific rational thinker to the philosopher um the philosophy sophist types and he says and i might butcher this a little bit but i it's something along the lines of he said it's like comparing two mountain climbers one of them has magic f shoes that can fly because it just uses their imagination it starts with the with the goal in mind and just gets there. The other one has struggle with building a footing and you know, you know, get and like, you know, scoping the whole place out and moving around the whole mountain and checking everything. And it takes forever to get to the top. And it never can get there because it doesn't have imagination. It has to get there one step at a time. That's the scientific rational thinker. The philosopher can just fly to the top with their magic feet. Because they have imagination. Do you get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of truth to that. It is. I think it's well said. Yeah. Maybe I mean, I... That, like, it, it just, you see that a lot with Christian philosophers. Where it's, they're, they, they, they're starting with the, the end game. They're starting with 
God needs to be God needs to be real. How do I get there? Yeah, I agree with that. Um, but I hope I don't die like Nietzsche did. Didn't he go crazy? I think he had, yeah, I think he had like syphilis or something. I don't know. I can't remember what it was. It was yeah, he had real bad health his whole life. Yeah. Well, yeah, he went nuts. He went nuts. Yeah, I got to stay I got to stay rooted in my conservatism so that, that doesn't happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for calling in. All yeah. right, Matt, see you later. Bye. Arthur finally got the courage to call in. <laughs> uh, let me see. I'll try to get you uh oh, What's up? I'm glad you called in. Why did yeah, you take been... why, why did you take it off your channel that video? Uh so I've been taking down my uh live streams. After a couple of days, I unlist them. Okay, and what's the thinking behind that? It goes to Patreon. Oh, yeah. It's okay. it's and it's not it, like somebody doesn't have to be paid uh, to access it on Patreon. It just goes to Patreon because I'm trying to develop a Patreon community. Okay. Is one of your goals to actually make money from YouTube? To make money from YouTube. Yeah. Well, this is a ministry, Doug. Uh, I don't know how much you know about it. YouTube is just one of the things that I do. Um, but I do so trainings is that a churches. yes or no? <laughs> I am already making money from YouTube is what I should say. I know, but do you want, like if... Uh, there, I already have support coming in through Patreon. So I know, if, but what's your main income right now? I have two jobs. What do you do? Uh, you don't have to tell me, but I'm curious. Well, that's fine. It's, it's public records. Uh, one of them is uh, I just recently got it, which is working with a uh, organization called Young Life. Uh, that I'm sure many people know it, especially if they've been in the church or come out of the church. It's essentially a Christian mentorship program uh, that that was started in oh man, like the late '40s, uh, and uh, and then this ministry is my other job. So I don't okay. just go on YouTube because I have nothing else better to do with my life. Okay. Yeah, I, I still, th like, th this is completely, like, I make uh, a few hundred bucks a month from YouTube. People stop donating to me, except today I got, like, a $2 thing uh, because they think I don't need it. But um, That's lame. <laughs> I mean, they, they, look, man, I just... <laughs> they, they should i don't know I, I i'm just of the mindset generally just uh, in regards to both in ministry and just outside of ministry like if i go to a restaurant and i get good service i give a good tip that, that's just my personality it's yeah. also my culture like if you don't if you're not generous as an armenian it's looked down upon uh, armenians tend to be very generous people and um and i'm just like hey if you're getting a benefit out of someone you know if you like yeah if you're good at something you never you, do like, it for free dude, if you if you super chat doug 15 bucks you know don't drink coffee for two days man like come on no it's fine no you don't have to i we didn't prearrange this for no, no, him I'm, to beg for me but do you ever fear I'm not begging i'm telling uh, but do you ever fear that when your income is linked to your beliefs that that could be a problem um yeah, I mean, it de depends on uh, the situation. Like, I know guys that, um, and I'm not going to mention any names, obviously, but but I, I know this has happened in, like, Christian seminaries where people have changed certain theological views. And they, it's not even they've left Christianity, but they've changed a certain view, and um, they essentially kept it on the down low because if they came out and said that, changed their view... And to them, it was really not that important. Uh, then they would have lost their job. Say, like the the university held to yeah, but that would happen to you, right? Like if you became like me, an atheist next year, yeah, you couldn't be doing what you're doing now. Well, yeah, I wouldn't jobs. want to be doing what I'm doing now. Yeah. So what would you? What do you think you would do then? What would I do? Yeah. Um, if you became an atheist, I, I'd probably go, go back to dancing. Dancing. <laughs> I can I mean, see I can, you as a good dancer. I could, I could do some Armenian dancing, but that's about it. Um, what would I do? I'd probably teach. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty. I've always wanted to teach. This is kind of weird. So I've never ever wanted to do anything else in my life, other than teach. 
since I was in like second grade, I wanted to teach. The subject matters of what I wanted to teach has changed. So initially I wanted to teach math and then I realized in like seventh grade that I'm horrendous at it. Um, and then, uh, and then I want to teach high school history. So that's why I have a minor in education is because I was going to be a high school history teacher. And then when I did my student teaching, I, I didn't really like the public school system. Um, it, it didn't create an atmosphere where I think it's best for students. Um, so yeah, I mean, even, even the church, um, even like I've done youth pastor, I was a youth pastor, pastoral ministry, uh, at least the ministry I've done is always been coupled with teaching. Like education is extremely important to me. So I could teach history. I could teach philosophy. Um, I just teach. Okay. Well, let's get into, uh, that. I wouldn't video. do what, uh, I wouldn't do what Derek from myth vision does. Yeah, I wouldn't either. I actually think I, I'm getting bored of Christian apologetics. Aren't you? Um, do I get bored of Christian apologetics? I, I'm getting bored of it. Um, so here's what, why. Uh, so I, if if it was just arguments, um, yes, I'd, I'd get absolutely bored from it. Like hearing the same argument and having the same replies. I mean, there's there's only a number of ways you can skin a cat, right? Um, Never skinned a cap in my life, uh, but <laughs> just saying. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, the 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 reason why I don't get bored with it is because uh, because of people. I I enjoy working with people. I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy seeing people go through um, their faith journeys. I enjoy seeing people learn new information. Um, so that doesn't keep me, or sorry, that keeps me from getting bored about it but if it yeah, but you're, arguments, you're doing like real life stuff arguments. you're doing real life stuff like i like for me the whole idea of bringing up a video about slavery in the bible and then talking about it just to me is like it's become so boring um you know yeah that, that's a good point you know one of the things that i enjoy probably most with youtube uh, is actually personally interacting with people and then that's also like it, so the relationships have gone from a very general sense on YouTube to Discord, which is a bit more, less general. Uh, and then some of those have turned into, you know, exchanging phone numbers and becoming friends with people. So yeah. I've enjoyed that quite a bit. I would never do that. Exchange phone numbers with strangers on the internet. Yeah. Well, at that point, they weren't strangers anymore. Well, to me, you're always a stranger until you meet face to face in person. Well, uh, if I'm in Arizona, well, to some level, sure. you're still a stranger. If, like, I'm in, if I'm in Arizona, I'll make sure to stop by a dog. <laughs> we, yeah. can, we can grab some coffee together. Well, we, I got to be careful of stalkers. Hey, there was a situation of a, a Christian apologist I know who had to move. Get, big guy on YouTube had to move homes uh, because somebody like showed up at their house. Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, it's public stuff. It's weird. Okay. Are so, you... so what's the issue with philosophy here? It's, just, it's, it's okay. Why, why do people have an issue with philosophy? Because of philosophers, it's the same thing. Why do people have an oh. issue with Christianity? Because of Christians, it, it's often that case. Or atheists. Or atheists. Yeah, a lot of atheists are just mean, bitter, hurt people who feel like they didn't get enough attention in either their home or in their church and. Mm. And uh, and they just want to sin, right? <laughs> well, I don't know. I know some that have very, uh, very frankly told me that, but I I can't generalize that on everyone. Here's the problem with philosophers that I've talked to. Some of them, I don't have a problem with you, but um, there's one guy who pops into my head where I ask a question like, well, "Why do you believe Jesus rose from the dead?" And within seconds. It shifts to philosophy. It shifts to um, we need to go from a top down to answer that question instead of bottom up. Um, mm. Or if I ask a comparison question, like, do you believe, are you more confident Jesus rose from the dead or more confident that um, Jesus walked on water or that Jesus uh, was in Jerusalem at that time in history? Like, just comparisons. It's like, there is an apprehension from some philosopher types 
to answer those questions because it's harder to. Let me, let me, um, I'm going to try to explain. Like, so I'm putting myself in the shoes of that person and why I would do that sort of a thing. I mean, look, if you ask me why I believe in Jesus, I, you know, I could just tell you uh, because I want to, because I think Jesus is real. But that's not really that's what a, someone's asking, right? I that's, know, but that's a good answer, though. I appreciate that's that. I know, I know, yeah. because that's a normal personal conversation. But if, if somebody feels like you're trying to do a gotcha, then they're going to, you know, if they're in debate mode, they're, it's going to be different. And, and, I know I've done that, but um, somebody earlier asked me, hey, did you hear the gentleman that just earlier on called who, um, uh, who was saying, he was, uh, I guess, having some uh, mental issues and seeing someone. And did, did he say he was schizophrenic? Yeah. Or did you say that? Okay. So uh, he said something like, somebody asked me a question. Hey, Arthur, do you think that it, it would be better for him to remain a Christian or become a Christian, even though he said that Christianity makes his life worse. And so, so I, I, I was trying to be kind and I said, well, I, th I think there's more psychological issues there that need to be dealt with. And then he kept pressing it. And then so my response was, that's a false dichotomy. I don't need to answer your question. Yeah. Um, I, was that Travis? Was no, some, oh, no, it someone else? Travis. no, if, if Travis says stuff to me, I just tell him, stop being a jerk. But it, the thing is with that question, any, all Christians, if you're a non-Christian and you're thinking about becoming a Christian, your own scriptures tell you that you ought to expect your life to get worse. That's the default. Well, it depends what we mean by worse. So if, if physical suffering, is, yeah, if uh, persecution, is, you're gonna, yeah, but that's not what he's talking about. If the if the if the conversation is about like internal pains and internal sufferings, and you know someone doesn't know who they are and they're and and again, look, man, I've been in past, pastoral ministry. I've um, I've counseled a lot of people with a lot of different issues, like serious, serious issues in life. And and for me, at least, the way I've done ministry is at one point or another with uh, with some individuals, I've said, this is beyond the scopes of biblical counseling. This is beyond the scopes of you asking me what does the Bible say about this and what does God think about this. This goes more into a psychological realm, and I think you should see a psychologist or a psychiatrist. And I, and, and I firmly stand by that. I, I believe it, and I think people should be seeing counselors uh, if, if they need that. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean your psychological makeup is A-OK. -okay. Like, you can have serious issues. But if I were a Christian, I would still answer the same way. Like, it is better to become mentally ill than lose your soul. Well, again, I think that's a false dichotomy. It's, it's better for you to have both. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, of course it is. But, go see a, go but, see a psychologist. But if go it's but the brain is just part of your body, right? It's better to, to lose it's your broken. body in the flames than lose your soul, Jesus said. So, um, Or not the no, flames, I, I, but... I, I think, yeah, I, th I think that's a misquotation, but okay. Yeah, you know what I'm getting at. Um, yeah. So uh, you made a comment earlier that you thought there was something... You wish atheists were smarter... Uh, when it comes to philosophy, was there a particular concept or idea that you had in mind? Like, if there was no, one thing you wanted atheists to know about philosophy or about philosophy as applied in theology, what would it be? Well, I, I, I would like people to know that philosophy is not sophistry, that philosophy is not just like twisting words, because philosophy in and by itself, I'm not even including religious stuff into it, like Christians doing philosophy or whatever like that. Um, has a bad um, connotation, right? So my, when I told my dad I'm going to go study philosophy, he thought what I was going to do is just like dabble with words and just like you can't have a normal conversation because I'm going to switch it up on you and stuff like that. Like that's just generally the view that people have yeah. uh, with philosophy. And I, if you actually go back and read ancient philosophy, this is one of the, one of the issues that the ancient philosophers, at least like Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle had, was with the sophists, with, with these people who just knew how to give elaborate speeches and, you know, and all that stuff, but they're not actually making well-rounded arguments. So if somebody is doing that, then I would say, yeah, that's, that's bad. We shouldn't do it because I don't consider that philosophy. So your answer to my question is you want atheists just to have a better perception of philosophy, that it's not useless... Correct. Yeah, because okay. I think I think a lot of atheists have bought into the Richard Dawkins kind of folks, 
um, and think that philosophy is useless. And I would prefer to them to listen to people like Graham Oppy, somebody you mentioned um, on the show last time. Like, go listen to philosophers who actually deal with this um, area, this discipline, or just people who are actually doing philosophy, not people who are outside of philosophy talking about philosophy um, and then saying, ah, oh, it's kind of useless. You know, it had its days. It had its heavy. Yeah, but this is, I can ex share with you um, what atheists are thinking, <coughs> some atheists are thinking, and that is, when it comes to, let's say, a super deity's existence, uh, all-powerful God's existence, and you're using philosophy to get there, a lot of atheists view that as sitting in a chair and creating a reality with mere thoughts and, and words. It's like saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to give an argument for a flower. It's, and, and in a sense, they're, they're right. You are creating it. Uh, some type of reality, but it's only in your head. And this, I'm speaking on behalf, I think, of, from a lot of atheists. And so for them, that is not a good enough epistemology. That you, if any argument of God's existence has to do with philosophy, um, they're just not going to buy it. They need something more tangible, some, something more real to convince them. Yeah. Um, again, the, the response is there, I would say, is that there's plenty of things they already believe in without it being tangible or anything like that. I mean, look at the word you just used. You know, it's not a good enough epistemology. It's like, where did you get that word from? I, no, I'm saying this is, it's all opinion-based, right? It's for them, it's not sufficient evidence. Like a philosophical argument is not sufficient evidence for them to believe it. Correct, and that's fine. I mean, uh, philosophical arguments could be bad, right? I mean, you could have a deductive argument where the conclusion follows uh, but it's a it's a false argument. It's an incorrect. But but even if it's premise. sound, a sound uh, syllogism, I, I think even Graham Oppie has. Uh, yeah, but if the premises are false, it could be a sound syllogism with false premises, and you come to a false conclusion. Right, right. But what the Graham Oppie would say is that with each premise, it's loaded with. You could make a new argument with its own premises and conclusion. And the conclusion is that premise. And then within that uh, syllogism, you could pick one premise and create its own syllogism with premises and conclusion that leads to that premise, which is the premise of the original one. So and, let me ask this. Does Graham Oppie believe that you, therefore, you can't come to know truth through philosophical inquiry? I don't know his answer to that. Okay. Um, but, yeah. but I don't he, either. I'm just, but I remember him I talking about this. I he would say that. Yeah, I, I doubt he would say you can't come to truth. Yeah, I doubt that too. But I think um, for most people, and I don't know if it's Graham Oppie, like there are some some things that are easier to believe than others, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And when it comes to the God belief, uh, sp especially specific theism, I'll leave deism out of it. But for specific theism, that's way harder to believe. Than let's say, a, some type of nebulous, general, deistic type God, which most philo philosophical arguments, at best, get to. Let me. This is um, that. That's fine. I, I don't necessarily have a bone to pick there. Um, does it ever um, interest you, or is it a part of kind of your processing, that uh, a lot of folks, at least that I've come across, that are atheists? Um, tend to really be in sci-fi and believe in aliens and the possibility of them appearing and they're really into fantasy genre and video games of that sort and Star Trek. I think you get that impression because of YouTube atheists because a lot of them are gamers. Maybe so. By the way, I, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, not so much Star Trek, and I like fantasy genre. I just, uh, it, it's just it's, it's interesting to me that they would deny something that you can have Say so a certain conversation about philosophically God, but yet at the same time will be very open to a belief about extraterrestrials somehow having visited us or visiting us. That, to me, that, that if you take that and you say, okay, what is the drive of this epistemic kind well, of but, closeness to... But hang on, there's a big difference between God and extraterrestrials, right? 
Yeah, yeah, co correct. I'm, yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying so they're one the same. I would say one is easier to believe, but I would say, uh, like the a priori, one mm -hmm. is easier to believe than the other. Why? Because one is you're not coming up with a, a new category of existence with extraterrestrials, but you okay, are so doing could, doing that with God. Could Could you help me understand what follows? Uh, kind of from a philosophical perspective as to why atheists might, uh, sorry, atheists, why aliens might exist. Why they may exist? Yeah. Uh, because the galaxy, uh, the universe is huge. Mm -hmm. There's pl other planets that are si similar distances to the sun as us. Mm -hmm. um, there's um, minerals, there's atoms existing. So if, if evolution via common descent could happen here, it could happen there. Given the right atmosphere and all that sort of thing. But do, did you get the point I made, though? Correct. But by the way, you realize that's a design argument. Design from, arguing, design from yeah, nature, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. design yeah. from nature. No, you're arguing that uh, from a design perspective that uh, aliens are more probable to exist than a... Uh, yeah, but do you know why I said that? You kind of glossed yeah, but, over it. I, I just, no, I just don't think that uh, that we exist and the universe is big, right? So, okay, the, the given is we exist. For The given is we exist for anything. But Whether Arthur, you glossed over that you. main point That's I made. Okay, correct me, correct me. Okay, and that is that it's more reasonable to believe that extraterrestrials exist because it is in the same category of existence as us, the natural. Mm-hmm. And with God, you have to posit a new type of category of existence called, you can call it spiritual, you can call it intangible, you can call it uh, supernatural, whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it. And isn't it more reasonable to believe that something that's in the same category as you exists rather than something of a new category? Isn't that reasonable? Uh well, it's reasonable, yeah. I, I wouldn't say it's not reasonable. No, no, and, and reasonable in that one is easier to believe than the other. Because, because, so it, it depends on the argument. I, I could develop a case where I don't think it is more reasonable to believe. No, just in general. So let's yeah, say that's what I'm saying. So let's say I you think, just woke up from amnesia. You know very little of the world, and and you. I mean about theism and non-theism, whatever. And someone says, "What's easier for you to believe, extraterrestrials or an omni god?" I mean, I I think if you're not in come from a theistic background, I would say 99% of people would say extraterrestrials, of course. Because what, what is spiritual anyhow? What is, uh, how, what is this thing you're talking about, this God that's not physical? What, what does that mean? It exists but is outside of time? What does that mean? But hey, terrestrials, yeah, we can understand that. I mean, no, I, I get what you're saying. I just, uh, I, I think the the God hypothesis um, is an answer that is uh, deductive to a certain extent, maybe even inductive in, in another way, that you look at what exists and you either deduce from it or you induce from it the existence of God. Where when you're looking at extraterrestrials, you're saying, look, we exist. Great. So, and the universe is really big. There must be other things out there just like us. Well, not, the, they wouldn't use the word must, but there can be. There probably is. I mean, that's, you, you know, you'd probably think about it in more probabilistic sense. Yeah. I'm just more curious in the, into the... Uh, and for folks who are watching, I'm also trying to be educational in this conversation, and I'm not trying to just argue with doug because i have nothing better to do with my time i've been sick for this we're just whole waiting week. for jesus to come anyhow so. <laughs> i've been sick this whole week man i've been stuck at home i can't hear out of my right ear oh. um it's, i've had something really weird and i'm and i'm speaking tomorrow and i'm speaking on sunday so i got a crazy week ahead of me um weekend uh I'm, i i want people to ask themselves the question why and even the christians why are you like more open to a certain belief than another belief. So your epistemic openness, right? Like this is a more of a, maybe this is more of the like psychology of epistemology. So when you look at something or when an argument is presented, you find out your next door neighbor is an atheist and X, Y, and Z. It, so what makes you immediately go, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. 
Right. That's a problem if, if that's there in your yeah, question. Yeah. Well, this happens right? in politics all the time, too. Correct. It's, yeah, it's, and I think the answer is your life experience, how you're raised, the culture, um, your values, your goals. Uh, there's a lot of answers to that question. Correct. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying there's mm. like one sim simple thing, but people at least should be aware of their own kind of psychological openness. And then sometimes there's a cognitive dissonance there. And that's kind of what I was going after is that we reject the existence of God but we're going to be more open to the existence of aliens because of X, Y, and Z. And that's just funny to me. I, I, so I'm an agnostic on the subject of whether there's aliens or not. Like I'm, I'm very open to aliens existing and, and God having created other creatures and other Well, planets. if if a person came up to you and said, I, I believe aliens exist and I've met one. Yeah. What would you say to that person? Well, I'd have a bunch of questions for him. I mean, what well, what would be one of the I questions? I don't know what it was. I'm trying to see if I've ever met someone actually like that. <laughs> That's like if, why I had to pause. If someone <laughs> looked you straight in the eye and it was dead serious and said, "I saw an alien," um, in fact, me and my friend did. Yeah, I'd that, say, okay, tell me about that. Yeah. Now, would your let's say they just make that claim that uh, him and his friend saw an alien? Would you believe them? At, that's all you know at this point. Well, I don't. They, I don't need to believe them. I, I would. I know, but would you? No, but, but I don't believe people who come to me and say, "Oh, I saw Jesus in my dream." Okay, good. So you wouldn't believe yeah, them? Like, okay. Well, it's not that I, I. It's not that I would or I wouldn't. I, well, no, I come on, withhold, Arthur. See, this is why people don't like a, like philosophers. I want a straight answer out of you. With all belief, it's like if my son runs into the house and says something, I, I generally will hold, with all belief. I'm like, tell me more. No, if your son came up to you and said, I saw a, um, I don't know, the dog fly from our house to four houses down up 100 feet in the air, you're not going to believe your son, right? Uh, well, it depends on my son. Um, oh. It depends which one. You're giving philosophy a bad name if you're like, <laughs> you would not believe them. No, I mean, look, I'm, I'm, I'm being a little facetious. Right. Now, but yeah, you're sure. You're right. Okay. Yeah. So when Unless someone... They, they were like, hey, this thing just happened, you know, and this, you know, snapped the dog up into the air. And I'm like, okay, that seems awesome. What I'm, what I'm doing is I'm running the flying man thought experiment with you, uh, but using an alien instead of the flying mm -hmm. man. And, the, and I'll, I'll just get to the punchline. I can go step by step by step of all the evidence found within the Bible for Jesus and apply it to an extraterrestrial... And my guess is, well, I'd be curious to know at what point you would say, yeah, aliens exist. Whether the experience of those people was actually um, true to reality. Yeah. Whether they experienced it or not. You, do, you, do, you have any, do you have any like, um, feeling or of what, what cut type, what evidence you would need to believe aliens exist? No, I, 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 probably I can't just tell you that right now. Like if an alien came up to you tonight, and like yeah. you go to go to sleep, you wake up, and um, next to you is an alien. It doesn't look human, doesn't act human, but can some way still communicate with you. Would you believe that there's this is an alien? Um, I'd be confused, uh, probably. And let's say you would, let's say you wake up your wife and your wife sees the same thing, and then you actually take the alien you put duct tape around it so it can't move and then you bring it to a lab at what point would you start believing in aliens well look i can experience i can have an experience doug i've had supernatural experiences okay like what so i've seen things so i've like i've woken up with uh with what i've what i think and what i would say was a demonic presence in my room next to me and i've saw i've seen it but that's my personal experience right um and I don't necessarily expect you to believe that. Like, I get it. I get how weird that sounds. I get how strange that sounds. Um, no, it doesn't sound weird, strange or weird at all, because I can point to a story like that, too, that happened to me personally. Mm -hmm. I, when I was uh, in college, there was a time where I was lying on my bed, and I... Uh, I could have sworn the devil or a demon was right on top of me and I couldn't move. I could barely breathe. Yeah, but did you see something? Uh, no, I did not see it. I, okay. but, I, but I felt it. Yeah. But yeah you, you, know, you saw something. I did see something, yeah.
Was it so at night? It wasn't night? just what people commonly refer to as uh, sleep paralysis. Was it at night? No, it wasn't. It During was the, the day. middle of the day. Middle of the day. It was at like 4 p.m. I was taking a nap. Okay, you were taking a nap. Yeah, I woke up and the thing was standing next to me. And you were in college? Um, no, I was, uh, well, I was college age. Yeah, but I was, I was living at home. Yeah, I this, never is, lived in this, is, this is very typical, Arthur. It's always, what? Th these experiences happen to fall in that age range of college age. That's interesting. Why? Why do you think that is? Because, uh, well, here's my theory. Uh, between the ages of 18, 22, 23 is when you're the most stressed. You're, you're trying to figure out who you are as a human being, as an adult. Uh, oftentimes, you still got hormones raging. You Oftentimes, you're sleep deprived. This is why you took a nap, right? You were very tired in the middle of the day. Um, not really. I'm, I'm just... Okay, I'm, you're I'm a napper. A, I'm, I'm one of those persons with that naps. Um, uh, uh, during that age range is when you have the most... I think conflict with personal relationships, like you're date, you're either dating or it's like, yeah. And so I, I, the 10 years of me doing this and I hear these personal stories of seeing demons in my mind, I'm thinking automatically, ah, oh, you're 22. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, that's you were 22, a, right? <laughs> well, I have no idea how old I was. That's, I got to go back and see how old I was. But um, you actually saw something like, did you try to touch it? No I, no, I couldn't move. Okay, so this to me sounds like sleep paralysis. Yeah, I know, but it wasn't because I wasn't sleeping. How do you know you weren't sleeping? Because I was awake. How do you know you were awake? <laughs> How do I know I'm awake right now? <laughs> That's, I was awake. I mean, at one point or another, I mean, if you're going to try to argue to me. How long do you think it lasted? Sleeping. Um, it lasted for about five to ten seconds. Five to ten seconds. Yeah. Was there a window next to your bed? No. Okay, so there was no shadows or anything from the sun. Well, I don't know what you saw, but I, I, would, yeah. bet, I would bet my life savings if we had a time machine and went back, there would be no demon there. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, obviously you're going to say that. And with confidence. I mean, yeah, extreme I confidence. Yeah, but I could say it with extreme confidence that I think it was a demonic presence. What's more likely, though, to you that... To me... Yeah, what is more like presence? What what is more likely to you that you actually experience a demon or that you're mistaken? That I saw a demon. Hmm. Given that there's so many people, even people who believe in God, who right. don't experience demons or angels, mm -hmm. like you, would you agree that there's more people who don't experience that than do? Yeah, I mean, a majority of my life, I haven't experienced that. That's not okay. a normal activity that happens in my life. And do you agree that hallucinations is a real thing? Yeah, I think people can hallucinate. Okay, so how, how did you get rid of those options? Uh, because there's no conditions that would be fitting to me to conclude that I was hallucinating. Like, what conditions would you... Like, are you saying that... Hypnosis? Um, I don't know. Extreme... Water deficiency, extreme hunger, heat strokes, any one of those things would, would be... See, let's just say I was in the desert and not in my, in my home. Mm -hmm. And I had that experience. I'd agree with you. I'd probably be a lot more skeptical to that experience. I was in the desert, so I hadn't eaten anything for a couple of days. Uh, that's partly the, part of the reason why you're arguing the way you are. Were you in college? Were you stressed? And this and that. I'm a lot more stressed right now in my life than I've ever been. I, I was not stressed when I was in college, I'll tell you that. It was a, it was a, it was a more fun experience. Well, were you a Christian me. back then when it happened? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, were you struggling in your Christian walk? Not necessarily, no. Hmm. I guess that was too <coughs> long ago to um, have had a smartphone and take a picture. Correct, yeah. Yeah. Next, if that ever does happen to you again, please grab your smartphone, and take a picture, take video. I would love to. <laughs> that, that's probably what I would do. I'd, uh, yeah, I mean, look, um, I think, I, again, this is not an argument that I would expect someone, like, becomes a Christian over. Like, a person could be completely rational and reasonable in their mind to say, Arthur, I trust you. I know you well enough. Um, 
to trust that what you're saying is not a lie. But that's still not good enough for me to become a Christian. And I would completely agree with them. Well, yeah, I would too. But yeah. I would say that what you just, the experience you just said, I say these are the real reasons why people are Christians. Many of them, not all, of course. And, and these types of experiences. like um, Most Christians I know haven't had experiences like this. Well, it's more than you think. Like even I know, but I'm, I'm talking about like my friendship group, like most people I know. And I, I, I mean, I, I've known quite a bit of Christians um, in the last 20 years. I think yeah. Randall Rouser, you know who that is, right? Mm -hmm. He's the philosopher guy. Uh, I think he's a Christian today because of a very similar experience that you just mentioned. And he's talked yep. about it on his YouTube channel when he was in Japan. Um, he swears that the devil walked into his room or a demon. And so whenever I think he doubts Christianity, it's like, or his arguments and, or the Bible with the Old Testament atrocities, he, th I bet you anything, he thinks back to that. But, but that's normal. Life. That's natural and normal. Yes, of course. I'm not saying it isn't. So but... I remember talking to a guy who was an atheist and um, we'd, we would go back and forth um, and and he asked me a series of questions. I answered him and then I asked him some questions. And it came down to it where he said, you know, I just can't believe in God because when I was a kid, I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed for God to save my grandma when she was dying. And he didn't. And I don't believe in God. And so I would say the same exact thing to that. I'd say every time somebody presents an argument to this guy that could be remotely uh, convincing that there is a God and that Christianity is true, he's going to go back to that experience and say, but this God let me down when I was, and there's emotional pain there. And, and I, I think that's valid that there's emotional pain, but I just think it's normal and natural for human beings to fall back on their experiences. Yeah. The, the question really comes down to whether their experiences are authentic experiences or not. Yeah. Cause we all experience all sorts of weird stuff. And this is, I think I agree with you. But the thing is, for, for a lot of atheists who at least are like me, our standard of these experiences, it, it, there's a higher bar to get over. Like if someone goes through life and something happens and they think it's God behind it, I, many times I, that's just coincidence in my view. Mm -hmm. But there can be things that can happen to me. And this is why I think you can put God in a science test tube. If God is real, and if there's a version of God that does interact with, um, with his creation, you can see the evidence of his miracles. And so if, I think if, if your God exists, and if he actually wants people to believe and come to him, what he ought to do is to achieve that goal, is to announce through some type of prophet that in three months... He will be at this location and he mm. will raise someone who's been dead for years and verified dead from the grave. And all of the TV networks from around the world are invited. All the doctors who even are familiar with this person's deceased body, the records, health records, and then do that. And then do, do that miracle every three months in different countries around the world. And, and why is that? Why do you think that's the best way for God to do it? Because for the people who value empiricism, mm. it would give them what they need. And for the people who are, let's say, doubting Christianity, I think it would give them what they need. Like, even if they say, yeah, I believe in the supernatural, I, I just, I believe there's a God, I just can't buy into the Christianity thing. But then Jesus himself, God in flesh, comes back down, announces ahead of time, does the miracle for, and that's verified, and then repeats it every three months, I mean, you would still have free will to reject it. Say, yeah, okay, yeah, there's this guy named Jesus. He did that. I'm still not going to worship him, though. You still got the free will to deny him. But at least all this business of, well, did he really exist? I mean, did he really do the things in the New Testament? You could squash that. God could squash that if he wanted to, all those doubts. Well, it seems to me on a large scale, he does squash it on a regular basis. That a lot of people still come to believe in them. Not the way I'm proposing. It's yeah, correct. All, it's yeah. always these remote places in Africa, right? No, it's, I'm not in Africa. You've seen someone raised from the dead? 
<laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm just saying. Like, well, that's what I'm proposing. In regards to my experience. Yeah, see, but you were alone. There's nobody else that could verify that, right? This is a very personal thing. What I'm saying is a miracle that can be seen by Jews, Muslims, atheists, Christians, Hindus. Uh, Al Jazeera will be there. CBC will be there. ABC will be there. The Russians will be there. I mean, if the whole world of different biases says, yeah, that guy was, has been dead for three years. Jesus said he would come back uh, and raise him from the dead, and it happened. He's now walking around. He's, he's on CNN doing an interview right now. I mean, I, I am. I mean, if that happened, right. I'd be a Christian. I'm sure, I'm sure you would. Do you doubt or me? Or maybe not. Maybe not, but I think, I, to me, that's better than my water soaked nap. No, no, it was just funny because I, I, I was reminded of, um, I think it was Richard Dawkins. I hope I'm not misquoting this. But questions were asked in this kind of order, and then he said he said something like, "Well, I might think I'm hallucinating." Like, as a, and I was like, "Okay." But you can't make that argument with what I'm proposing, because now we're talking about literally millions of people of different biases with instrumentation, with video, with audio, uh, with DNA. I mean, at that point, if you still want to reject that, it, you can reject, you know, worshiping God at that point. But to reject that, oh, this has happened, then you got to start, you know, rejecting a whole lot of other things. Well, correct. I, I just wonder in the in the modern age, how many people would uh, think that's AI and it's fake and it's made no but if you do it every three this months this is a sincere question I'm, there's not an argument i'm just like seriously saying no no that. i agree i agree that people would doubt that but the thing is the beauty like god should hire me for his pr team the beauty of this is that if you do it every three months in different countries around around the world you're giving people the opportunity to see it with their own eyes not so it's not just oh i saw this on youtube yeah i'm just curious to know whether that's just the way love ought to work What do you mean? Like you that you would demand evidence in order to love? No, no. That you would demand a specific kind of evidence continuously, always. Every three months. Yeah. No, I, I get what you're saying. And the other question to ask is whether God is interested in saving souls? No. <laughs> Just having mere mental assent to a proposition. Well, in order to have a relationship with a person, you have to at least know they exist. Amen. Right? Yeah. That's what the book of Hebrews says. Yeah. Yeah. So at least you've come over one hurdle and then the second hurdle is for people to decide. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't disagree. Somebody said 5G hologram. <laughs> uh, I guess that, that I just want to correct myself. That wasn't Richard Dawkins. It seems like Jerome knows that he said that's a reference to Peter Atkins. So I stand corrected. Thank you. Would you say yeah. it's bad or sin for a non-Christian to ask for that type of evidence? Um, is it a sin? No, I, I, no, no, I don't think it is a sin. Because some Christians have told me it's a sin. You have the, you have the prophets, you have the revelation, you have the scriptures. Uh, only a, what's the word? A basically evil nation or person would ask for such evil things. generation a generation there you go yeah well I, I would probably conclude that that's either a misquotation of that text or a bad application of it um I, it's it's very hard to judge and and I, I and i frankly don't think it's our place to judge people's motivations unless we're given reason to and they tell us what their motivations are um, if it's a sincere, if it's coming from a sincere place and somebody's saying, God, I really need to experience you. Um, that's what's holding me back. Everything else I'm good on or something like that. Um, that seems to me more genuine kind of thing. I, I think if the motivation of the individual is sort of like, God, prove yourself to me. Um, that, that my, I might say, is probably not the, most well thought out and pure at heart of an inquiry or a prayer. 
So I think these things can change, you know, and I, I would say the same thing for Christians as well. It, your motivations matter quite a bit. I mean, if it's... <clears throat> but there's a lot I at stake, right? I, I, look, I tell, people, I tell people all the time, I say, uh, you know, you should, you should pray and ask God to reveal himself to you. Yeah, I'm not but, an issue of telling people that. But if I, if I was next to you when you told a person that, I would say, and keep your standards high. So That's now, fine. So, well, I don't think you would say it's fine if I added this. So when you say, God, reveal yourself to me, go to a person who has no limb and say, please restore the limb. Yeah. Or I've, or my loved one who's been dead for five years, bring them back, have them bubble through the soil and to the surface. Not this, um, Lord, reveal, uh, show me you're real. I really need a job. And then what do you know, next, the following week they get a job. Like to me, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah that's it, not what I'm, uh, that's not necessarily what I'm re referencing. Yeah. Yeah, I, w I would say, th I wouldn't call those things miraculous. I, I, the word miracle, I think, is a misused word, overused. Um, and so I'm a bit more strict on my definition of what a miracle is. I, I would say those things are more like providential sort of things. Um, but here, here's my question. So there, there's experiences you have, right? That, that how high are your standards is my question. It depends on... Like, how high is your standard that... For God? No. For your own existence or the existence of your family members. How high is my standard? Yeah. The, what do you mean? Like, like my own existence? I think therefore right? I am. There's, that's I'm a good enough you standard. you trust your experience, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, for my family members, that would be... Um, no, for their existence in your mind. Oh, see, this is why people don't like philosophers. <laughs> okay, so I'm just... I was doing that just to mess with you a little bit. Uh, partly because I, I think you, you want to be, we, we can all go crazy with asking these sorts of questions to like very simple things in life that we experience. Right. Like, you know, like the fact that when I was like, I was awake and you were like, how did you know you were awake? And I was just like, <laughs> I was awake, bro. Like, what do you always say? Um, I, I think sometimes when it comes to a conversation about religious experiences, and again, I'm, I'm skeptical. When somebody comes to me and says they had a religious experience, I ask them a bunch of questions. Okay, I don't just immediately believe them or conclude them, conclude that what they're saying is, and even people who are very close to me, I want to know more of the story behind it. Because <coughs> um, you can go nuts like, oh, do I really believe? Do I believe my wife exists? What if she's a figment of my imagination? Right? Like, yeah. you but, can they, but I want to say, I, I want to say, like, to answer that question, I would say, I would, Say I would want for God the same amount of evidence as my own wife. Correct. Yeah. So you ask, how do you know my wife really exists, or what? Where's your standard? How much evidence? Well, I would yeah, but then you come up with the standard, like I see my wife or whatever, like yeah. that, right? Yeah. Okay. I want yeah. to see her. I want to see God, touch God, feel God, smell God. Does he fart? I want to smell it. Um, I I can tell my wife to take a cup and move it from one spot on the counter to another. Can God do that? I want to see it. Yeah. And I bet you very few people on this planet have seen God, touched God, smelled God. No, but they might have experienced God in various ways. Yeah, but there's so many defeaters. You as a philosopher know the defeaters to that, right? To what? To e experiential... Um, uh, experiences of, of do you, a deity. Do you, Doug, do you think people can know the future? Uh, they can predict it, yeah. In what way? <laughs> you, are, you are not answering okay. my question. Which one? What are the defeaters to spiritual experiences? Well, it depends on the spiritual experience. I experience God, uh, um, and I know he's real. How did you experience it? Oh, I felt him. I felt his presence. Mm -hmm. Is that a good? Well, no. I, again, I, I would ask the series of questions that you asked. Like, so I would say, so, you know, were you, were you in, say, a worship service? Yes. Right. And, and then I would say, okay, cool. Uh, it, it could be that your experience of what you thought was god was actually your experience of good music okay 
Now, what if they say, I'm probably saying that. What if they say that I know God is real because of this exper experience? And they I would say you need better reasons to know that God is real. Okay, what would be a better reason? Um, that's where we're going to talk about apologetics. I mean, I, I, there's many better reasons. I Wouldn't could, you say I touching, you know. seeing, feeling, asking uh, to move an object from one thing place to another where there's different no, because biases you can in find the room? The for that. Yes, you can, but <laughs> but. Here's the thing. It is way easier to find defeaters for spiritual experiences. For example, the um, Mormon with the burning bosom, the um, the Hindu with the spiritual experiences. There are there are many types of people on this planet who have what they claim a spiritual experience, and attribute it to a god that is in contradiction to the god you believe in. Yeah, I I don't necessarily deny that those are spiritual experiences. Okay, yeah, you'd just blame it for demons or some other type of source. But here's the point. The point is those defeaters are so rampant in society that it happens like on a daily basis. Whereas the defeater to did an object go from point A to point B when there was scientists in the room or different biases in the room watching with with um, machines and whatever. Those defeaters now you're you're that's much tougher to overcome. Yeah, maybe so. So this is why I would I, say I would say logical defeaters are very difficult to overcome. So this is why I think a lot of people they like when you gave your uh, your spiritual experience about seeing a demon, and you said it yourself, they will just dismiss it. But if you saw a demon, or if you predict that you will see a demon in the future, and we have different biases to verify it, um, I mean that now you got something. Cameras in the room, people of different biases. When the when the demon appears, um, somehow we you know poke it, try to grab it, and if it just disappears, the video will pick that up. Uh, we could even have lights, lasers going across. So if it is some type of object that your eyes can see, it would have to block the laser. Um, so yeah, it. I mean, very simple test you could do. Yeah, I don't necessarily deny that. I'm just, I'm just saying that you you can come up with all sorts of experience like that. And, and, and I mean, we have scientific phenomenon that there's multiple interpretations of the data, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what, what is keeping us from concluding that given that there are very, very good scientific data where people still disagree about it. And we've been studying this, that specific part of that scientific data for a hundred years, let's just say. There's still disagreement about it. Okay, but Why wouldn't look we what you're doing here. That? No, 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 I'm, I'm not doing anything. I'm not, it's not an argument, it's a question. That's the setup for the question. No, 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 but... Uh, that scientists would disagree on that phenomenon that you're talking about. You're talking about things like quantum mechanics, right? No, I'm talking like origins of the universe stuff. Okay, like <laughs> that's even worse. Relativity, <laughs> general relativity. No, okay, for, forget origins of the universe. Right, the, the, the theory of general... Specific I'm talking about verifying stuff theory. like, is this water bottle here? That's the type of stuff I'm talking about. For, yeah. If you can see something, like a water bottle, in the same way you're seeing a demon, like, do you think the demon was actually there? Or do you think it was just in your head? No, I think it was there next to me. Okay, that we can verify. And it's so simple, just like this water bottle. Sure. Right now, you're bringing up questions of of origins of the universe, or maybe um, I, uh, I just want to know spooky uh, well, electrons spin at a mm -hmm. distance. I mean, those types of things. Th this is why people do not like philosophers, is because this has well, nothing to do with philosophy. Well, uh, I said philosopher, not philosophy. <laughs> I, I know, but wow, well, <laughs> it's because you'll 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 start to to use these extreme examples uh, as a pushback to a very simple example. Right? No, it's, it's, it's not. What I'm saying, you're, you're talking about having lasers in a room and scientists to observe and the demon shows up and predictability and stuff a like that. A laser is just a light. Saying, sure. What, what is keeping us from thinking that that happens, let's just say. And a bunch of people studying the subject come to different conclusions on the matter. I think, and what are we going to say? Oh, because they have different biases. These scientists believe in God, and therefore they're more, uh, you know, on the side of that this is a demon. 
these ones were atheists no. and therefore they're going to deny that because, oh, look, they're all biased. Why can't we say that's going to happen? Do you think different biases would disagree that there's something there? Uh, they don't have to call it a I could, demon. I, I could be snarky. No, no, okay, I'll just give that to Yeah, th that's what I'm getting at. At least this is the first barrier. Like when people believe in God, uh, you're, you're getting to the, to what, okay, a saying that's a demon or a god or whatever, you're getting to even the nature of it, what it is and what it's like. I'm just saying, let's first figure out if, it's, if it actually exists. And then we can ask questions like what it's, its nature, is it good, is it bad? Yeah, but, okay. But people can't even agree on the existence of it. Well, I wouldn't say that's true. That people can't agree on whether the existence of the is is there a... of God. Yeah, there's plenty of people that agree that God exists. Do you think there's there are sincere more... atheists in the world? Yeah. Okay. Well, then they there's an example of people not agreeing whether God sure. exists. Do you think atheism is? This is a side question. Okay. Do you think atheism is natural to humanity? Um. Like you're born. You're like born. Oh, atheist. do I think atheists are born? Yeah. <laughs> or is atheism taught? Uh, this is a sincere question, Doug. Yeah, I, I know. I th that's a tough question. I don't know. I, I mean, I think we evolved with these ideas in our head to help us survive. So what you're kind of asking is, is it in our gene? Is it in our code? Uh, or are these just stories that are passed down for thousands and thousands of years um and people well, remember if, if it. you're like if you like jungian kind of thinking and jordan peterson you'd say the stories are within your genes and yeah to me the the answer to that question is not that interesting that it, because it's basically we know religion exists okay it's here <clears throat> and then the question is why and i you say because it's pointing to something that's real i would say it's because it is real in the sense that it's in people's heads and their beliefs, but it's not real in terms of the way you view it. And it's more uh, of a way for humans to get comfort, to survive, to do what's good mm -hmm. when nobody's looking and so forth. You know, it's interesting. So I, I'm thinking about my kids right now because I think personality maybe has a lot to do with some of this stuff, but. Yeah. I think the more, uh, if you have a needy personality type, you're more likely to be a theist. I think so. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's true. Yeah, I don't know. Like, look at Christianity. Christianity is the best religion out there to meet the needs of the needy. I think the scriptures even say that. <laughs> Somebody should create a short out of that. <laughs> meet the needs of the needy. No, it's Bl like blessed are the poor I, I in spirit. I just want a short right? out there where Doug's saying Christianity is the best religion out there to meet the needs of the needy. And just like think about a a thirty five year old person who doesn't have existential angst, uh, is financially secure, has great relationships, has mm. a family. And they come up to you and say, why do I need Jesus? What would you say? Because you need forgiveness. Because you're a sinner. And if it, that person says, I don't believe sin exists. In order for sin to exist, there has to be a God. I don't believe, let's say this person's an atheist. Well, then the conversation will change. I mean, it, you're, you're kind of changing the goalposts a little no, bit. No, no, but they ask you as an atheist, I can ask you the same question. You, we can make well, it very personal. Well, if they're asking me, why do I need Jesus? I'm going to tell them because you are a sinner. You've done wrong against God, and that's why you need Jesus. Okay. That's so a the, different question. So, okay. If, if, okay. if they come and say, look, I'm really rich. I got friends like this, by the way. Okay. I got very well off friends. So let me, like, let, I don't need God. Let me, let me change the question slightly. So, and I'll make it personal, since I'm an atheist, I don't have to make a make-believe atheist up. Um, what's in it for me if I become a Christian? Forgiveness. Okay. Reconciliation and, with God. Eternal okay. life. And why, why would I want reconciliation with God and forgiveness? I mean, what's in it for me to be forgiven? Well, because if you don't, then you won't be reconciled to God and you will be punished for your, your sins. What do you mean punished? 
That's what I mean. You will be punished. You will. How will I be punished? Uh, I don't know, but I wouldn't want to find out. Okay. That I think is a good answer, but I think that's the, not only the, a good answer, but the only answer you could give. The reason why I didn't say hell there right away, just for people who are like, Arthur's, does he not believe in hell? Whatever. It's partly because when I say hell, um, people think whatever their imaginations are telling them or whatever they were taught when they were kids, you know, pitchforks, demons, and nonsense like that. Um, and the reality is we don't know what the reality of hell is, uh, what that's going to look like. But notice what you didn't say. You didn't say, well, you should become a Christian. Like, what's in it for you? Well, you'll have peace. You have joy. Yeah, that's you not did, true. You didn't say that, right. Yeah, I mean, I could. I, 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 I would say, again, the reason why I don't say those things is because I think people misunderstand it. If I say you have peace, people think your life's going to be just fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think that's the case. Uh, look at the apostles. Um, if I say joy, people think happiness. And I don't think that's always the case. And I think I, I distinguish between joy and happiness. You could be very sad and very joyful at the same time. If people aren't sure of that, they should read some stories of uh, people's lives where they've gone through extreme pain and how they had joy in, the, in those moments and still sad at the same time. Uh, like, and so part that, that's, I'm just kind of putting all my cards. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Stuff. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, and I think you got scripture to back you up there. But I, a lot of Christians have told me that <clears throat> when I ask this question, they'll say um, to have some type of relationship with yeah. God, right? And then... A guy like me will say, well, tell me about this. I mean, what, what can I get out of this relationship that I can't, uh, that's better than my wife? So, Doug, uh, like, whenever Can God I have sex with me? I mean, <laughs> my so, wife can. No. Uh, the, the answer to that question is no. <laughs> uh, and if somebody's telling you yes to that, you're in a cult. Get out. Um, Actually, I have heard one Christian say that. Well, well it was a Christian-ass cult. But okay. <laughs> that God actually has coitus with. Uh, yeah, that's that's creepy stuff. Like I said, you're in a cult. Get out. Yeah. Um, you know, when I, when I give presentations in churches and I'm talking about apologetics, and I'm talking about evangelism. Um, I warn them against doing evangelism like that. That you go to people and you tell them you become a Christian, you're gonna have peace, and this and that. Um, partly because it's not qualified very well. Um, the other thing is somebody might become a Christian and the following day their family gets in a car accident and he loses wife and kids. Yeah. Um, and, and now their response is what? There's no peace in this, right? Where is this God? And, and so it, it's very important to, in my mind, it's very important to speak about the things that scripture speaks about. Well, talk, speaking of scripture, John 14, 27 Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Yeah, so, so, so let's break that text down. I like it. Let's break it down. What do you think that says? I think it says exactly what it says, that uh, you well, got to define that's peace, but it, it's saying, Jesus is saying, um, I'm going to give you something. This something is peace. I'm going to give it to you. Jesus is speaking. Okay, and, and what's the something that he's giving is different than, than the way that people think about it. Well, no, he says, I do not give to you as the world gives. So he's saying there's a difference in how it's given. Yeah, th there's a difference in, yeah. The, so the world gives a different kind of it, and I'm going to give you a different other kind of it. Well, no, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say a different kind. It says it, it's just the peace will be given differently. That's fine. I, th I think we're bickering there. Um, the second part I'm, I'm more con concerned about, I think, is very interesting. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Mm -hmm. So if, if this peace is supposed to be of a certain kind of peace, why is he warning of troubled hearts and fear? Well, some people can interpret this verse to say that um, if you want to accomplish the goal of not having your heart troubled, then accept the peace I give you. That's how I would read it. Hang on. So I don't have a habit of reading Bible verses, by the way. So, so if my daughter came up to me and said, Dad, my heart's troubled. I'm afraid. And I say, well, take what I'm offering you. 
I'm offering you peace. So let's say it's, uh, I don't know, she needs money to go to something and she doesn't have the money. Here's the money. Don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. You can go to this event. Here's the money. Yeah. So I think contextually here, um, so uh, verse 25. So Jesus in the context is talking about the Holy Spirit and says, look, I'm going to leave essentially. And then he says, That's 27, right? Yeah, 25. All this I've spoken while still with you. So essentially he's saying, I'm no longer going to be with you. And you got to read the text. This is of the Gospel of John. He's about to die. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I've said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. And then that's the ending of that, right? Yeah, and it sounds like the Holy Spirit is that peace, right? Correct. Yeah. But again, that's a different kind of peace than the way people understand peace. And that's my point. When I speak to Christians, I'm telling them, when you're evangelizing, be very careful when you tell someone, you become a Christian, these issues are going to be solved. Very often I've seen in the church, people become Christians, and they have a lot more problems in their lives than they did before they were Christians. It's not always. Yeah, and my but theory is it's because they make it's, my theory is because they make unwise choices. I I don't necessarily disagree with you. I think Christians make unwise choices all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so I, when I was a Christian, I looked at people's messed up lives and I said to myself, "Oh, if the, only they were Christian, like they get themselves into so much trouble. But if they had the Holy Spirit, they wouldn't." That's true, though, right? Like the Holy Spirit is guides you to all truth, and if it's if it's if the truth is you shouldn't take heroin because it's your body's a temple and you're created in the image of Christ and whatever, and you shouldn't defile it, well, the Holy Spirit is guiding you to the truth of not taking heroin. Do Christians take heroin? Yeah, some do. They're bad, and bad Christians. And people resist the Holy Spirit. Yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but my point is, though, that when I asked you why I should become a Christian, what's in it for me, you went to the punishment, which I resonate with. I think that's a, the ultimate reason. But I think scripturally, you could have said and backed it up by saying you can have peace. That's why you should become a Christian. But then I got like, I would I would just have to qualify what that meant and what that peace. You know, you can have a peace of mind, but peace of mind about what? Exactly. And, and in what area of life? Going to hell. <laughs> Yeah, so, exactly. That's the most important point. Right. Like, so, uh, you, you know, when um, when Scripture talks about, like, giving a reason for, uh, you know, defense for, for the hope that we have, the question is, what is that hope that we have? That is something Christians need to understand and be prepared for. You as a Christian are walking around saying, I have a certain kind of hope in my life, which I could even in, in a certain context replace with peace the way we're using it now. And say, yeah, yeah, I have peace and I have hope. Well, hope in what, right? Well, hope in this thing that I'm going to spend eternity with God um, and I have peace in that. I have a peace of mind about that. I'm not bothered by it. I don't wake up in the morning and, you know, think about God's judgment over me and being his enemy and so on and so forth. But your answer of, about the punishment and, like, if you... I, I'm telling you the truth. You could hook me up to a lie detector. My belief that hell exists <laughs> is like so close to zero. Like, is it possible? Yes. Yeah. So, but given, I'm not surprised it's at zero. Well, no, and it, it's not logically impossible, right? There's a little bit of philosophy there. So, um, so then the question becomes: If I ask a question, why? What's in it for me? Why should I become a Christian? And you basically say punishment, which you know, slash hell, whatever you want to call it, and I don't believe in that punishment exists, then we're basically, well, what, what do you think will do it for me then? Yeah, again, um, my conversations with people um, are always different. It really depends where the person is. Now, I, I think it's, it should be understood by everybody that's watching us. Number one, this is not the first time you and I are talking. Number two, we're not new to this conversation, right? Like, so if I sit there and I say, well, I think here's an argument for God's existence and here's this reason and here's that reason and you can look at this. Um, that, that's the way I would go about it with that hypothetical person. If I sat with them and 
they said, well, I don't believe in God. So none of those follow. That, that, that's completely normal for somebody to say, I don't believe in God. Therefore, it doesn't follow that I've sinned. It doesn't follow that hell exists. It doesn't follow whatever X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. uh, so th then I would like to have my general conversation there about uh, whether God exists or not. That's where I would keep my conversation. Um, I, I don't think I have a guarantee that anybody's going to come to believe in God. Well, some of them, them believe in God already, but reject Christianity. I mean, there's a lot Correct. of Correct, and we there. have the conversations on different stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, I asked Sai Ten Brugenkate this question I just asked you uh, a couple of years ago. And um, you know what his answer was on, like, how to evangelize to a guy like me? His answer was that he would have to pray that my life becomes hell. He used the word tumultuous. Mm. That the only reason, the only way a guy like me would ever become a Christian is if God basically treated me like Pharaoh and where I'd just like have to hit rock bottom because, you know, I'm not praying to God to help me pay my electric bill. I am, I probably have more peace and contentment than most Christians do as far as like enjoying life and uh, my family. I have good relationships. Um, I That's have. Interesting. I have, I'm okay with struggling and suffering be, uh, and overcoming and reaching goals. And so when bad things happen, I don't immediately, you know, go in my room and cry. I, I, I view it as a challenge to overcome things. I'm a pretty stable guy emotionally. Um, so the only way God, I think, could, could, if he exists, could get to me is to treat me like Job or treat me like Pharaoh and just bring me down on my knees. That's interesting. Isn't Sai a Calvinist? Yeah. Why wouldn't you say something like, maybe you're not a part of the elect? Well, he could have said that, but it sounds too harsh for people listening. And also, um, he's commanded to evangelize, so this would be his way of evangelizing through prayer. I and, understand. And he plus, he doesn't okay. know the mind of God, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, that's... It's weird, because I, I, my response to that would be something like do we see and he could be right on this i just i'm just kind of do we see examples of that in the bible where people are praying that the lives of other people become hell so that they or i'm sure in the old testament i'm sure in the old testament moses well <laughs> there, there's prayers there, there there are prayers against enemies but that's different so those are, say, people who've harmed you and you're asking for justice uh, upon them. Well, in a way, done. I'm your enemy, Arthur. Oh, you're not my enemy. Those, there are those enemy, who walk in the light. Enemy. <laughs> but no, you're, you're God's you're, child. You're, you're in the God's kingdom. Enemy. You're in this yeah, family. No, no I, you know, we shouldn't get that confused. I think, I think maybe quite often Christians do that, um, that they get that confused. Practically, that. we're not enemies. But theologically, I think I can back Correct. it up that you and yeah, I are Yeah, well, enemies. the Bible tells me to love my enemies as well. So, yeah, hey. there, there you go. <laughs> Uh, if you want to put it blunt like that, I, again, I would just say... But I'm under the dominion of Satan because I'm of this world, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think Scripture teaches that. As, to be fair to Paul in, in that, uh, as were all of us, he says. So he's not distinguishing between, right, like this but you're group a new creation, I'm not. Well, correct. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so the idea the there is that man. all, all, uh, uh, all of us under are under this dominion and uh, enemies of God and against Him. But some of us have been saved from that, not because we have really nice bald heads and mm -hmm. awesome beards. I should ask my wife that question. What, what question? She, what she thinks it would take for me to become a Christian? That would be an interesting question. Yeah, she's home here. Should I try to get her in? <laughs> she hates being in front of a camera. But um, I think she would say something similar to uh, Cy Ten Kate. Maybe Cy knows you really well. I like Cy, and he likes me, I think. But I tend to like Calvinists. Why do you think your wife would say that? Is it because you're hard-headed? No. <laughs> no, it's not about hard-headed. It's about I am... We as humans all have needs, uh, but I am in that distribution. I'm at the far side of of neediness. Like I don't, 
I don't need a lot of friends. I just need a few. I don't, I mean, I'm very content person. I almost never worry about yeah. anything. Like I, people who have watched my channel for years can attest to this. I mean, aren't you worried about climate change? No. Aren't you worried about this? No. Aren't you worried about that? No. I just don't worry about things. Um, there's, of course, some things I worry about. Uh, but in general, I'm not, I'm not a worry ward. I don't get anxiety. Um, Have you ever gotten anxiety? Yes. I, I, I would say like maybe two or three times in my life. Okay. And it was, all when, I, it was all when I'm much, much younger, like in my early 20s or late teens. So, but there's a guy named Jack who's been wanting to get on for an hour. Oh, Jack, sorry, man. Um, it, 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 it's it's. You know, Jack? sometimes it's just boring. Uh, maybe listening to me and Doug talk because I, I think we agree on a lot of stuff, uh, and, and then uh, we try to create those disagreement areas. Uh, again, my my uh, my heart in all of this is for people. Look, if you're gonna disagree with Christianity, that's your prerogative. That's your choice. You can disagree. Make sure you're not disagreeing based on a caricature. Make sure you're not disagreeing based on some stupid reason. And then because every time, every once in a while, you're going to come across a Christian. Well, let me tell you why I disagree with it in, in 60 seconds or less. And you tell me if it's a caricature. Okay. I reject Christianity because I don't believe a man 2000 years ago was God in flesh, did the miracles as reported in the New Testament died for some type of atonement theory and rose the third day i do, i reject all those things now tell me That's is not that a is that a good reason to reject i mean are is my reasoning good your your reasoning is good it's not a okay. good reason yeah i like the way you caught that that was really good <laughs> and i should say I, I wasn't just talking about atheists there i should also say the same thing for christians orthodox jews yeah be, have a good reason if you're going to reject and know what people believe uh, because every once in a while you're going to come across someone who's going to spank you. Um, yeah, like me. Because they know what they believe. <laughs> yeah, and so don't fall into their hands, right? Like sometimes I see the people that call in to your channel, and I'm just I'm like, just don't. Like you don't have to call in. <laughs> okay, so here you are on my channel encouraging some people not to call in. I like that. <laughs> I'd say the same thing on my channel. Like people sometimes, like I know you might think you have a really good argument. Just run it by a couple, like write it down, process it, and then see if it's good. How about 12 research? credit hours in apologetics? They need oh, at least that before they can call in. Is that no, good? no. Look, if they want to call in, just have a normal conversation. I'm more than willing to do so. Um, if people call in and start like just immediately jumping into an argument, and, and what, I, what I would say is they come at me sideways, then that conversation looks very different. Um, I think I'm pretty gracious in the way I have conversations with people. But Doug, I've taken your time. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. appreciate it and thanks, thanks for to calling everybody in. who's been watching and jack i'm sorry again um jack's in big trouble he has to follow you i mean he better be good well i'm gonna be watching <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, i hope you feel better thank you uh okay jack no pressure hello hello yes holy crap right off the bat that's uh that's the first um there was a little bit of lag in the stream, so I don't know all that was said. Um, I will say, you know, as far as arguments go, this is something that 30% of people on uh, our debate in Atheists supposedly thought was interesting enough to upvote. So, yeah, that'll be something. Uh, apologies if I cut your last gu last guest off. Um, I cut his time short or anything no, like Yeah, that. no, no, that's fine. Uh, but I, I'm a little bit uh, confused. Are you a Christian theist? Oh uh, yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a Roman Catholic. We we've talked uh, twice before, man. Um, once uh, about a week ago, and once about three weeks before that. And uh, yeah, I had a friend who told me to uh, come in here with a uh, argument that I had before that I thought I you might find interesting, just because, especially because you know, with your description of uh, what you wanted for the stream, like you know, wanting more meat and bones shit, more. Uh, you know, less uh, okay. highfalutin philosophical. Let's have it. I thought you might find it somewhat interesting. Okay. So this is an argument with like a couple premises. The first one's uh, pretty simple. And I think I've heard some of like your responses, like 
I, I want to be clear here. I'm not trying to make like the uh, Aquinas just like base epistemal or um, oh. cosmo cosmological argument with this. Um, I would just like start as a first premise. The uh, the the law of um, causality requires an exception. Whether you think that's the universe itself or whether you think that's anything else. Would What's you the law of causality? Uh, that everything has a cause. That everything um, has a cause that is linearly uh, dependent. Everything on has a cause? Yeah. Everything? Yes. Everything? Yes. Even God? Well, yeah, that's, that's kind of my point, is that there needs to be an exception. Would, could we agree that that whether it's God or nature or something? So premise one is is not everything has a cause. Well, actually, premise one is something must not have a cause. Oh, something must not have a cause. Okay. Would 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 that be something we could agree on? Something must on? not have a cause. I'm not sure. Again, I'm, I really am not trying to smuggle God into this. Uh, premise one is something like, I've heard your arguments about this before to some extent with eternal regress. or And, you know, again, I'm a humble uh, West Virginian. I won't pretend to be any more wise than I am. But from what you've said, I get where you're coming from, where you don't want to, like, assume God from that. You could say the universe is the thing that, you know. Yeah, so what, what do you do with the whole argument? It, like, Is this an argument for God or not? It is an argument for God, but it is not an argument for God established in the first premise. I'm trying to leave it open with the first premise. Okay, but if I reject the first premise, then the argument's kaput? Yeah, theoretically. If you if you don't think the law of causality needs any exception, um, if you don't think that there needs to be something in the universe without a cause, then yeah. yeah I mean, okay, but let's let's keep it fun and just accept premise one. Okay. Okay, um, <clears throat> so premise two is that if free will exists, Oof. if true free will exists um, in all its precepts and that, that free will, if it exists, is an uncaused cause. And how do you define free will? Uh, the ability to choose regardless of any causal factor. That, that's what I would say. Like, we're not products of chemicals. We're not products of our environment. There is something within us that is able to genuinely choose um, unmoored from biological necessity. Does that make sense, at least conceptually? The ability to choose without biological necessity? Yeah. Okay. That there isn't like... That's not how I, I mean, define free will, but I, I can accept that for sake of argument. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm not a scientist, man. I, I enjoy science. I think it's interesting. But just like the idea that there's no protein that's saying, hey, um, Jack needs to eat spaghetti instead of pasta today on the most basic level. Okay, so if free will exists, free will is an uncaused cause. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Is that it for premises? No, there's two more. Two more. Okay. What's number three? Uh, premise three is... I usually don't do this, will, by the way. But What'd you say? I usually don't go through arguments like this, but today I will. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I apologize if this is tedious to anyone who finds this book. Well, hopefully th premise three and four are not long paragraphs. No, no, no. Oh, God, no. Uh, premise three is if uh, free will exists, it is the only uncaused cause we know of. Um, Isn't it the same I, as premise two? Uh, no, no, no. Premise two is free will is an uncaused cause. Uh, premise three is basically the assumption that anything you come across in nature other than free will is going to have some uh, mechanistic or physical explanation, like, say, decaying um, radioactivity or okay, something. Okay, so read it again. If free will exists, uh, it is an uncaused cause. That's premise two. Premise three is, if free will exists, it is the only uncaused cause we know of. It is the only. Oh. The only uncaused cause we know of. What about God? Uh, well, we're getting to that in premise four. Like oh. I said, we'll wrap this up with a bow quick, <laughs> and then we can see Okay, how. what's premise four? Premise four is, if free will is the, on is the only uncaused cause we know of, 
it is reasonable to assume that the exception to causality was a case of free will, which means God. What? Which means God? Uh, well, which means that the creation of the universe was through free will. Hey, Arthur, are you still listening? This is why people hate philosophy. Oh, Jesus. Am I the reason? No, oh. you're not the reason the argument is. Oh, well. Okay. okay, read four again. If free will is the only uncaused cause. So, yeah. If free will is the only uncaused cause, yeah. then it is reasonable to assume that the universe was caused by free will. Oh, and that free will is from God. Well, from a conscious being. It is which, reasonable to assume. Yes, because it's like the the argument I've given on other shows where people are way more uh, yell way more than you do um, is that basically, you know, if you knew one process that created a certain mineral, say, and it was iron and like copper in the ground or whatever the hell. And then when it got heated, it created this one other kind of mineral. It would be reasonable to assume that that same process has happened. Does that make sense? At least in the broadest of terms? No, I wasn't even listening to you because I'm writing this down. But uh, let me repeat Oops. back. Let me repeat back uh, what I wrote down. Premise okay. one. Uh, something must not. Hang on. Something must not have a cause. Is that I can't even read my own writing. <laughs> law, law of causality requires that something must not have a cause. Is that what premise one is? The, the law of causality must have an exception. That's fine if you wrote that. Okay. The law of causality must have an exception. Yep. Okay. And premise two was that I written down. If free will exists, free will is an uncaused cause. Yeah, if free will exists, it is an exception to the law of causality. You could put it that, that way, too. If free will exists, then it, it is the exception. To it is a exception. It is a exception. An exception, because the exception starts with E. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, premise three. If free will exists, it is the only uncaused cause. Yeah, it is the only exception we know of. Oh, that we know of. That's the difference between three and two. Yes. That we know of. Okay. And number four, if, if free will is the only exception we know of, it is reasonable to assume the universe was caused by an uncaused cause, by free will. Okay. So then, now do me a favor and... <sighs> Let's replace the word free will with cosmos. So read the, read the premises again. There's not four premises. There's three premises and a conclusion, right? I suppose. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I so I went to college for four years, man. That's about it. <laughs> so premise one, the, the law of causality must have an exception, so we don't have to replace anything there. Premise two, if the cosmos exists... It is an exception to the law of causality. Yeah, I, I guess I would just say I, I don't see how that's necessarily true. I see how... Well, of course, I, I don't believe free will exists, so I don't see that as necessarily true. So, uh, premise well, if you don't see free will as existing, I'm not going to pretend like this is an argument for you. This is only an argument for people... Okay, I, I, I understand, but I'm just yeah. replying to, to your pushback to the cosmos. But look how this argument can work for the cosmos as it can for free will. Uh, premise three, if the cosmos exists, it is the only uncaused cause that we know of. Conclusion, if the cosmos is the only uncaused cause that we know of, it is reasonable to assume that the cosmos is the exception to the uncaused cause or the law of causality. Done. I just proved that the universe exists. Yeah, if, uh, assuming, <laughs> assuming you see the cosmos as intrinsically an uncaused Philosophy cause, you're right. You know. Yeah. So for all you uh, philosophy of religion types, take put that in your pipe and smoke it. Yeah, well, like I said, it all depends on if you see the uh, universe as an intrinsically uncaused cause. I would say we all experience our free will much more fundamentally and basically than we do the cosmos, which is kind of why I... What? Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, I think, but I, I would say the free will that we... the the choices that we make that we think is free is uh, sort of like a property of the cosmos. 
I mean, maybe, man, but I got to be honest, you know, when I was, uh, you know, my whole life, I've seen my free will is probably the most basic thing in my life up there with my own consciousness, experiencing the world around me. And uh, yeah, and I'm I, like I said, I'm not trying to be a pedantic fuck about this, excuse my language, but I, I'm really not trying to, you know, do anything that anyone can't see themselves. I think we all kind of live our lives with free will. And I think from free will, there is a decent argument, at least for God. But you would say that free will is still caused by something. Would I? I mean, well, I mean, go ahead. Explain why you think I would. But wouldn't you? Well, <coughs> the free will of God is caused by his nature. Oh. Yes. The free will of God. Is like when caused... God makes a choice. Yeah. Freely. Yeah. What caused that choice that God made? Him. Him. What caused your free choice? You. Yeah. So right there, this argument breaks down because free will is not an uncaused cause. It's the soul. It's the will. It's the mind of the person causing the free will. Hmm. I mean, that is, a, uh, that is an interesting A to B, I will tell you. But I, but I still feel like I experience my soul or my consciousness a little bit more directly than I do something as abstract. Well, as yeah, you, what you're saying is I, that's true for every thought you have. You experience, it's like, I think, therefore I am. It's the most fundamental thing. So I agree with yeah, you there. But, but again, like what I just said about this uncaused cause business and free will, who, wherever you got this argument from, one of your philosophy buddies, no, I actually came up with it myself while drunk, but that's beside the point. Oh, that's why it failed. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> okay, back to the drawing board, I guess. Fair enough. Yeah, no, that's okay. I'll Is anything else you want to talk about? No, that was about it, man. I'm sorry if I cut off someone more interesting than myself. That was about it. Oh, there was one other thing. There was one other thing. This is not really a uh, argument for a guy. This is just kind of a question if you're open to having it. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, it was just, um, I don't know, you know. Sounds like you're going to get serious. Well, I mean, you know, uh, Good Friday is tomorrow, and that's kind of a big deal for drunk Irish Catholics like myself. Um, True. Uh, but, and, and I guess it's just like, you know, I've been thinking about religion over the last week because you're supposed to in a certain way in my faith. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the thing I was reading about was just like a lot of the certain saints over the last century, especially, and some of the orthodox ideas about what Jesus did when he descended into hell and preached to the dead, and some people thinking that he preaches to the dead eternally, and that basically he reveals himself to them at the point of death and gives them a chance at salvation. I was just kind of curious, you know, I, I, I definitely know the answer uh, for this for some other atheists, but... I was curious, like, if at the moment of death, you know, whenever you pass over that great, uh, big, uh, you know, whatever in the sky, if, if, if you were to be, you know, come face to face with Christ, not a question of like, you know, oh, would you feel stupid or oh, would you feel this or oh, would you, but like, would you be open to the possibility at the moment of death? of like you know jesus offering you the chance at salvation what are, what are my choices salvation or what hell whatever that is well that's a no-brainer if i had if i don't want to live eternally either way but if i had to make a choice gun to my head uh i've been told that heaven is a little less painful than hell yeah all right so enough. that's a no-brainer right nobody well, likes you know. like torment well, you know, it's funny you say that, man. It's just like, I mean, don't get me wrong. That's the answer a lot of my friends give. My, a lot of my, my, in fact, the specific atheist friend who is uh, probably texting me up right now for calling into you after having a few. But anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> I only had one. Oh, hey, what are we having? What are we having tonight, man? What are we having? Oh, Kieran. Uh, Ern Eichben. Oh, old German shit. Got a no, no, this is Japanese. Japanese, yeah, wow. Ichiban. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm doing the redneck red apple ale. But anyway, okay. uh, I appreciate you taking my call. It's a very interesting answer to me. I gotta say, because there's some 
who I know who like, you know, the, the Matt Dillahunty's in the world who wouldn't even be willing to hear him out. So, well, that, uh, let me ask you this before you go. Like if, if what you believe is true or what you said is true about Jesus speaking to the dead and that after you die, you have another chance. Why should an atheist become a Christian here on planet Earth before death? I'm glad you asked me. I'm glad you asked me because I actually have a fucking answer for that. Unlike most people who don't think about this. Um, the answer I would say is that uh, if you don't accept Jesus here on Earth, this might not be the case for you considering your upbringing. But if you don't accept Jesus here on Earth, you are less likely to be willing to say, yes, I'll hear you out. I think you are more likely systemically to be a Matt Dillahunty, Jimmy Snow motherfucker who will just say, fuck you uh, to the risen Christ in the afterlife and just be kind of jaded and... Well, wait a minute. I, like, yeah. I, know, I, I agree with your sentiment that uh, Matt Dillahunty and a lot of other atheists like him are just bitter old people. Yeah. But um, like if Matt Dillahunty actually got to see Jesus... And to the point where, like, there's no doubt that this is, isn't true. Like, they're convinced that heaven's real and hell's real. And if hell's this really bad place, I, I, I don't think Matt Dillahunty is stupid. He would still self-preserve. Oh, no. Oh, no. According to him, at least, by his own uh, logic, he would say, fuck you, God, you're a tyrant, you're a piece of shit, you're homophobic, you're sexist, yada, 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 the thing, the thing. Well, wait a minute. Okay, well, is your question that you have to bow down to Jesus first and kiss his feet? Like, or is it, <laughs> or is it just you get to choose heaven or hell? Well, well, look, man, I don't, I don't know the, uh, the exact specifics of it. I mean, like, I'm a Catholic, so I believe in purgatory. That's a big out for me with us having time to figure out what all this means in a way that I can't quite, you know, wrap my finger on. Um, but yeah, like, I, I think, I think Matt Dillhunty would probably be more likely to say, uh, I wouldn't even hear you out, you know? And I, I guess that would, be, that's the best analogy. Well, I he think. wouldn't have the choice. Like if, if he's in front of Jesus, Jesus yeah, will well, make no, his I knees think, buckle think, and he has to bend down. Well, I think Jesus would say, you can hear me out or you can, you know, rule go, in hell. Go straight to hell with uh, with Hitchens. Yeah. Well, no, I don't know. Hitchens, Hitchens is one I think is probably still arguing with him uh, 25 years later, whatever the fuck it's been. He's probably still talking it out, uh, bitching about it and all that shit. God love him. But yeah. <laughs> Okay, Jack. Well, thanks for calling in. I hope you don't have a hangover tomorrow morning. I will, but it's Good Friday. I'm off. Take care of yourself. Okay, you too. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, um, for those of you who came late, I, um, I'm friends with a very famous musician, and he made me bumper music. And I'm going to play the outro here. And if you want a copy of it, you have to donate fifty dollars because he's a, he is a, a professional, and so he doesn't do things for free. Um, let's see where is it. But you guys can tell me what you think of it. So I recorded it. He okay. did this for me last night. Here it is. All right, here we go. You recognize it? Famous song. <laughs> you'll, if you don't recognize it, you'll recognize it at the chorus. I think he plays at Carnegie Hall, Carnegie Hall in New York. Titanic, right? Sorry, awesome, awesome clips. You need to donate $50 or more in order to get a signed copy of this single. But I thank you for the 99 cents. I mean, this almost brings me to tears. So beautiful. I want to give you a compliment. It's recognizable. <laughs> I gotta get...
to go together. Well, yeah. So $50, that could be yours. For a monthly donation of $50 made out to the Wichita Home Office, you too can own a signed copy of this great hit, along with a new hit every month. I have a deal with him. 50% goes to the uh, talented musician named Matt, 50% to me. Oh, he's not a kid, a uh, mystic citizen. No, the, the great music you just heard on the violin is from a 45-year-old male who's been practicing the violin for three decades. And you know, to me, the best argument for God is the argument for beauty. And what we just experienced here, I mean, how can someone listen to such beautiful music and not believe? Like, this is what gets me. I mean, this is what causes me the cognitive dissonance. And Matt, if you're listening, good job. <laughs> and if you listen to the whole two hours 53 minutes what's wrong with you get a life but to my christian friends listening have a good friday i don't know why they call it good friday because jesus died that day it's the resurrection which is the good sunday right <laughs>